Uh, good morning from Hurlingham. Semi-final day today. Uh, I'm Chris Clark, joined by Gavin Carter. Hello. And we've got two quite different semi-finals, I think, to look at today. On the uh, lawn we'll be featuring, we've got five-time world champion Robert Fulford. And he's going to be playing Tom Balding from America, who's won his first medal yesterday with a 3-0 win against Alain Giraud. And have you seen much of Tom this tournament, Gavin? Only yesterday, really. I'm most impressed with his play. The only time I'd seen him previously was on the webcam at the MAC over the winter, um, where he looked very nervous. But yesterday he was most impressive. I didn't see him do one error. He was hitting straight. He was hitting very well. Oh, it was, it, the play was unbelievable, to be honest. Um, it, it looked like he'd been playing world semis for years. So, playing five-time world champion Robert Fulford, what are we expecting from the match? Um, I think it's, it's going to be quite a high-quality game, this one. Um, I think Balding's full of confidence. Um, I don't actually think he'll be too bothered that he's actually playing Robert today because he's just on form, he's just flowing. Um, I think Rob made a couple of errors yesterday. He'll probably have to up his game a little bit. Yeah, he failed three hoops yesterday. Mm. I spoke to him after play and he said um, he thought all three would have gone through with the ultras yeah. in the previous days of the competition, but just none of them went through yesterday and yeah, caused three errors. However, to counter that, he said he hit all but one of the shots he took during the entire match. Right. And when Robert Fulford shoots straight, he's very very difficult to beat yeah and i think today he'll try and take tom out of his comfort zone i think we'll see some popping that's peeling the opponent i think tom will get peeled to hoop three a bit during the match and hopefully from robert's point of view he'll be trying to make sure that he never um, gets a standard triple peel and that every time he has an opportunity it's going to be delayed or from a really tricky pickup position yeah, I mean, that sounds perfect tactics. I mean, these hoops, six of the eight players yesterday struggled with them. Um, they were spitting out balls. Anything slightly angled was definitely more of a challenge than uh, in the previous week's play. But as I say, Tom, he, he coped with them so well yesterday. I was very impressed. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the other semi, we should mention, that's going to go on lawn two, so a bit further away. Um, so semis on two and three, so we can have the final on four tomorrow. Uh, Robbie Fletcher, the number one seed, and he's playing Matthew Essek. What are your thoughts on that one? Uh, Essek shot so well yesterday, um, and it, he made Mark Avery change tactics and do a couple of one-back leaves, yeah. which then Mark was going for a TPO, which is not his normal tactic, um, but Essek was literally hitting everything. His break play was, I think he did one error. He played really well. Um, Fletcher, he struggled yesterday. He got through a tough match, but very error. Loads of errors yesterday. So I think Essex the favourite in that one, to be honest. Uh, and I agree. Um, a slightly different viewpoint in that at the start of the Essex Avery match, Essex made multiple errors. He failed hoop four, he failed hoop three, he got clips on three and four. And if he starts that weekly, he might be 2-0 down yeah. by the time he, his game picks up. However, I think they were mainly speed issues. And having played a full day yesterday on the front lawns, I think he'll be more comfortable with the speed. And I think we'll get a faster start from Matthew. Yeah. And once he's in, he wins quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a fluid player. Third turn balls round, yeah. fifth turn wins, sixth turn wins he's going to really put some pressure on Robbie. And yesterday's match between Robbie and Jose, um, my thought was, irrespective of which player I was, if I played to the level that they played at in a world championship, every time I've played to that level, I've lost. Yeah. So really, they're lucky that they're playing each other and one of them's still in. Yeah, it was, um, it was a torrid game, to be honest. Um, especially compared to all the other games that were going on, um, 
it could have gone on all night, really. It could. But yeah, Essek, it, he's just so confident with the single ball strokes that he just takes the aggressive lines and... When uh, he was on like yesterday, it was good to watch. I think he is good to watch. Yeah. I, I love the positivity. Yeah. Uh, I love uh, the aggressive lines of play he takes. Um, he's the one I'd be looking at going, I'd be worried that he would annihilate me if I had a bad match. He'd just absolutely He'd walk away take me you. to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to play really well to be competitive against him. Um, and obviously he is playing the world number one, so we are thinking... It is going to be a really competitive match. Um, mm. We're expecting Robbie to come out with blocks much faster than yesterday. Yeah. Um, I've always thought Lawn 2 was a little bit flatter than Lawn 4. Uh, oh, definitely. Yes. And probably not as quick. So some of the hills that he got yesterday, uh, probably due to his own previous misplay, yeah. um, won't be as in play today. And hopefully he can just, you know have a nice easy break to fall back early on and get a TP under his belt and you know, produce the form that we expect from Robert Fletcher. Yeah, it was a strange day yesterday because even when he, he laid for the one back leave and he, he didn't get the peel at one back and started on the, the TPO, he just failed one back from nowhere and it was very unlike him. He's a very good hoop runner. Yep. Yep. Um, I think I would think it was just an off day for him because um, his standard of plays generally has been pretty good. Yeah, I, 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 I think he's been the best player in the world for you know a few years now. Mm. Um, he's playing them at Robertson Shield I thought was exceptional this year, uh, both tactically and physically. Mm. Uh, I rate him enormously highly. Yeah. Um, but during the Opens and during this event, I've seen chinks of... Mm light to potentially give the opponent that little bit of hope yeah um so two fascinating matches um i think we do have to highlight at this stage quite how well tom has done he's for the first time yeah. after winning three nil yesterday he's made it into the world top 20 um really good um and one of the things i, I said to people yesterday was during the robertson shield where he, he did have a torrid time he came back to the clubhouse and he was positive mm. every day. He was, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm going to get better. I'm going to win tomorrow and I'll go and do some practice now. And, and, you know, as a teammate, you always felt that, you know, he was going to get better. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, I'm dreadful. I can't play the game. This is rubbish. It was, you know, a very positive, uh, lovely chap. Uh, I'm hoping he has a good match and we do get a competitive match. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think with his confidence being so high, I mean, he was on the phone yesterday trying to rearrange all of his clinics he's got planned for Monday because obviously he wasn't expecting <laughs> to get this far. Um, so he's very into his croquet, and I mean, that's shown. You know, when I saw him on the on the live stream on the Mac, I was amazed at kind of the errors. I know the pressure that players talk about, but seeing him actually in person and his fluidity and his touch on these lawns it's um it was good to watch so he's obviously put a lot of work in just to get to the standard as as most of the american team actually they're quite a tight contingent and many of them work at country clubs as croquet professionals don't mm. they yeah and having the additional time to work on your game obviously you have to give your clinics and your your coaching that's their main role for club members but you're going to have a few hours each day just to work on your own game, aren't you? Just just hitting balls every day, even if it's coaching, and then half hour shooting in the morning and half hour after work, um, you'll just keep that standard up and then just improve it. You know, a lot of the GB place base players just play tournaments, and there's not many of them that practice in between. Um, which I think when you get to the elite level at the top of the game you need to put in some practice just to keep sharp yeah so Robert Fulford always a big practicer he's got a swing trainer at home yeah he uses a metronome yeah to, to help him with his tempo his swing speed if you're trying to get as slow a speed as you can while still maintaining the ability to hit the ball firmly when you want um, so that's one of the things that Robert does it's in um pressure situations when your heart rate goes up you just swing a little bit harder and you just get out of your normal rhythm 
So obviously Robert's just ingrained this over years of training even without hitting a ball. Um, so one of the things we should probably mention is over the last decade Robert's wrists have got worse and worse and he now tries to minimise the amount of practice he does where he actually is hitting a ball. So um, every impact is jarring, mm. particularly when you're doing shooting practice. Yeah. And now he does a lot of his practice simply in that swing trainer, just getting the swing where he wants it, and then he'll do a little bit of practice hitting balls, but trying to save his wrist. Has his shooting accuracy changed much over the years? Not really. I think he's, he's always been a really good shot. Um, the only main difference is where he used to be the best cut rusher in the world. Yeah. He'd run hoop one and have a quarter ball cut to corner four, and it would just glide gracefully into corner four with power each time. Uh, now with that sort of shot, he might just tap it and play a croquet stroke to hoop right. two. Right, yeah. Um, so he doesn't want to be extending that swing and doing too much. Um, we watched one of his games a few days ago, and he was rushing quite close to the balls instead of to the boundary and giving himself plenty of room. So he got tucked up for room occasionally. Uh, so Rob's now finished his practice. Tom's just having a few more hits. And best of five again today. And what openings do you think we'll see? I think Tom will be aggressive. He was going rounds. Was he going round 13 yesterday? Can't quite remember, but I would imagine he'll be super shotting. Um, he's certainly hitting well. I don't know what Robert's normal openings are, to be honest, but. I would have thought he'd try and keep it quite tight at the start, at least. Is he an East Boundary ball man, Robert? Robert can play, and might play, almost a range of seven or eight different openings here. Um, if Tom starts playing well against him later on, yeah. while Rob will definitely play a super shot, yeah. he'll definitely go, T I'm taking control of this match. Yeah. To start off with, I think there's a chance that Rob might not, and he might play something more basic. Uh, interesting that clearly we've got Tom winning the toss, yeah. he's chosen to go first, and he's going to the east boundary. Yeah. And I think Robert's going to try and either play a duffer tice, um, maybe level with the hoop, or go just out of corner two, just south of corner two. Um, and quite an awkward ball he's put up there. It's almost three. max distance, isn't it, Gavin? So would that really enhance the Duffer Tice, or was that almost kind of...? I think that enhances corner two. Because um, the hoop's in the way? Well, because you, you're thinking Tom might shoot down from corner three into corner four, and yeah. then I can join up with partner in corner two. Yeah. You know, if I miss it, he's still got a... It must be 16 yarder back, back north again. Yeah. Um, so Rob has been playing Duffers all tournament. Um, is that very northerly ball going to encourage him into corner two? He's, he's looking more like he's laying a Duffer to me at the moment. Yeah, this is what he's been doing most of the event. Uh, it's probably going to be about hoop high, maybe a foot short. No, he's changed his mind. I think, I think he was planning to play a duffer, and yeah. this northerly ball has moved him to corner two, and I think it's the right decision. And there's lots of people who just go onto the lawn with an idea of what they're going to do, and they're not willing to change. I think if Black had been six yards further south, he'd have, he'd have played a duffer. Yeah, that is very northerly ball. So I, I found some of the responses from sort of second shots from the Americans slightly unusual to what we're used to in Britain. They've almost got a different sense of what to do with openings or super shot responses, putting balls in slightly different places. It's yeah. pretty interesting. One of the things we should mention here is Robert hasn't managed to get south of corner two. He's actually hit the corner peg and gone into the corner. And that Tom started shooting fantastically again, so he's hit partner. I was going to say he could have shot at the yellow in corner two. Yeah. Because it's short, and if he misses on the right, he's only giving a single ball target away. Yeah. But he's shot from a bulk, hit partner, and he'll now take off to corner two, and he'll dig the ball out, and Rob's going to be faced with a pretty long fourth turn shot. Um, 
Even We've, Tom just hit it and just walked after the ball. He yep. was confident he knew he'd hit straight away. Yep. But it's, it's a bit of a dicey takeoff. You've got hoop two bang in the way. I don't, I'm not sure he's moved black out enough to be able to hit off behind it. Just squeeze past the hoop. But it's not a bad length takeoff. He's left himself a five yarder. <laughs> so made sure he didn't go off. These are sometimes quite sweaty, but I think with his confidence, it's got no hesitation. I do think the difference that it's in the corner, and you know, yeah. even if I miss it, yeah. I'm not giving the double target away. Yeah, is at least some sort of comfort to you. That's so, quite, quite a poor first shot by Rob. Yeah, can't have, can't have really held six inches, could it? No. Uh, comfortably hits that. And he's hitting quite firmly, isn't he? Very firmly for that, yeah. But again, that's confidence, isn't it? It is, and I, I want to be taking Hill out of play on my lift shots. So the fact that he's got a naturally firm shot yeah. should be an advantage to him. Yeah, because that corner two on that lawn is quite fast as well. And Paddy asked, does anyone know what speed Rob sets his swing metronome to? I don't off the top of my head. Um, so I might try and find that out um, at the end of play, and we might get that in the final tomorrow. I'll let you know what what the metronome speed is. I have read it years ago on the knots board. It is out there. It is, okay. Well, we'll try and find that information for you. Um, Mike Malpass is asking, will the Essex Fletcher game be streamed as well? Well, we're just focusing on this Lawn 3 match. Um, and Lawn 2 is quite a long way away from our cameras. So we are gonna struggle to get uh, much footage from lawn two but we'll try and keep you updated and to me at the moment it looks like we've had a super shot from blue um, red has gone to the maximum distance spot black has missed it from a bulk and Matthew playing yellow has hit the double target from B bulk so Matthew now has an easy chance of a fourth turn break that's the identical break to at least two games yesterday against Mark Avery where Matthew hit one of those balls and one of the things I'm going to be interested in if Matthew does you know keep hitting uh, when I was playing really strong opponents here and they laid a super shot I just took it out I just I just hit it yeah and move the balls to corners two and four area and said okay you're not going to go around from that I'm going to hit and again fourth turn yeah and you know this match is going to be on my mallet rather than giving you a whole load of 17 yard yeah. shots for breaks that is just Hitting, I'm, I'm amazed how many shots in a row you can hit, and all proper centre balls as well. Yeah, you know, uh, they're not clipping. One of the things I said about Matthew when he won the Golf Croquet Worlds last year is, virtually everyone I've seen win a Golf Croquet Worlds has had a bit of luck. I thought Matthew was just good every yeah. day, and I thought it never looked like losing a match. And people played really well against him, yeah. and he just took them apart. Yeah, he's impressive. Uh, so I do really rate him as a player, um, and it's uh, good to see him get a fourth turn break here. Um, so Rob now taking the short lift, and it's almost the same length as a long lift, isn't it? Yep, it's a, it's a very nice defensive leave, actually, from Tom. Yeah, Lovely, nice. smooth swing, walks after it, and he's hit blue. And one of the things I've noticed with Rob playing for him for 25 years is when he's shooting from A-Bulk, he shoots at the in-lawn ball. It's shorter, and he backs himself to take off behind the black and get a rush to yellow. Um, it's also saying, actually, if I miss it, I'm giving you a five-yard pickup. Yeah. So there's a couple of reasons, but he's hit it. He's hit it probably fractionally off-centre on the right, and now he's a good seven yards away from black, so he's going to need a good touch shot. And that boundary looks a little bit brown where those maximum distance, doesn't it? It does. It does. Another shout out to the Hurlingham ground staff. Cracking job they've done. Um, the lawn's probably maybe down to 12 and a half now because we've got this overcast weather. But they're, they, they really have been very, very good. And the players have been making speed errors. So here comes Rob's takeoff. Oh, it is fast there, isn't it? Wow, that kept going. Yeah, but he's, he's coped very well. Oh, it's a fantastic yeah. shot. Rush at yellow. 
But that was clearly a fast bit of the lawn, I thought. Yeah, it's just got the brown patch there. Um, but yellow's not that far in lawn. Yard, yard and a half. He's rushed black to the perfect position, though. Be able to croquet this two hoop two and get nicely behind the yellow. Uh, it's the dream start yes. for Rob. It's a great first few shots, isn't it? And obviously, first thing he's got to do, he's got to get a breakout. So black to hoop two, get red behind north of the yellow to be able to rush yellow to one. Once he's done that and he's maybe made two or three hoops, I think he's going to start thinking about peeling Tom through hoop one. He would have his um, preferred first break line of play sorted out in his head Absolutely. the game. Absolutely. Quite likely to be peeling Tom to one and three. Um, if he's going to stop at one back and I don't think he will first game I think he'll try and keep it more basic and go to four back Yeah. Um, but if he were to go to one back he might peel Tom to two and two Right. Yeah. so that if Tom hits in he hasn't got a ball at his hoop but I, I am expecting nine hoops early on um, Keith and myself are going to end up being miles out on our estimate I believe you said eight we both said eight and at the moment, I think it might be none. I honestly believe there's a chance it might be none. I think these hoops, after yesterday, have changed people's maybe ideas about it. Because I haven't seen anyone lay up for a quad. No. Either, which is kind of interesting. And uh, You do that, presumably, as an anti-TPO measure. Yeah. So your Robbie obviously has been going to one back and then TPOing yep. and getting multiple peels on partner sometimes. Yep. He had a bit of a nightmare turn yesterday. Um, but if you stop at three back, at least you're saying, well, even if you do a QPO, you're not going to get any peels on partner. Yep. Do um, we know Tom, does he TPO at all? I think he does, um, but the standard American tactic is just to reply with a basic ball to four back. Yeah. and allow the opponent to miss the lift yeah. and that's what I did when I played uh, I thought from a percentage point of view on an easy lawn just get a nice break to four back do a warm standard leave and if they miss you've got a standard triple yeah. um, on a more difficult lawn I might try some popping just to make it a little bit more difficult for my opponent we even watching the um, British Open final last year Deeth employed the popping and then defensive leave against Reg, which I seem to remember Reg failing or misapproaching two back off. Yeah, I one mean, game. it sort of didn't work and it sort of did work in that you know Reg didn't manage to get the balls out in time to do a one back leave, and um, but still sort of picked up a break mm. and. Um, then just approach misapproach two back from nowhere. He's just mid break yeah, and it's literally nowhere. So Rob He's picked up this lovely, got all four balls in play. And again, once we get past hoop two, hoop three, you'll be starting to think, I think, about throwing balls down to hoop one. Um, to try and peel either before hoop five or before hoop four even. Yellow isn't a perfect hoop three pioneer, so I think blue will be sent over there just to improve that. Matthew, in the meantime, has made hoop four with a four ball break, and I think he'll be making nine and stopping at four back. He's just whizzing round, he's confident as well. Yeah, I love watching him play, I really do, I think he's great. Um, I actually didn't think he had a big chance of winning this event because I, my initial thought was it is going to revolve around peeling turns and yeah. sex tuples and he didn't have the career history and the comfort level that people like Fulford and Bamford um, and I suppose uh, Robbie would have with sex tuples yeah. um, but once it's turning into a hitting and TP competition well, Matthew is absolutely in his element. Yeah, he's up there with the best, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so Robert's a bit further away from hoop two than I thought he was. You think he's going to run this hard? 
Yeah, that's all the way to the boundary. And he won't want to have done that because he's now got a four yarder coming back. Yeah, it's not great when you had four balls there, but you don't want to mess with these hoops, especially on the first 20 minutes of play. You just want to get round. But he sent Blue over as a, another Pioneer to hoop three, approaching his hoop two ball. And both of them are long, aren't they? Both yeah. are halfway to the boundary. so And kind of the wrong side as well, really. Yeah. We've mentioned we want to keep the balls inside the rectangle. Both of these are outside. Um, but there's another quote that two bad pioneers are equal to one good one. Yep. So he's got two bad ones. Um, Black will be going to hoop four here, I think. Um, these are nice croquet. It's a big croquet stroke, but if you can play it well early on, you can get the pace of the lawn. Both balls moving quite a distance. Yeah, I'd probably play this standing up with a half roll. Yeah. Robert's moved his hands a bit further down the mallet than I would. Uh, going to be getting over it a bit more, but that's how he plays them. Make sure that hoop six doesn't get him in, into play. Played well south of yellow, and black again has black's gone moving. halfway to the corner. So everything I've been saying about overcast skies and maybe they're half a second slower, that's not being shown in Robert's turn no. so far. Are, are these lawns being mowed every day? Every day, every day. A fantastic job. Um, I noticed they have one of those um, machines you see on the golf greens that, that flattens them. No, it rolls them. Yeah, a little yeah. roller. I'm wondering if they have that, them on here. They were on the bowl screen yesterday. And they do. Um, how often they're rolling, I'm not entirely sure. We mentioned yesterday potassium silicate. And you might not have seen that on the commentary. Or, no, what's that? Um, well, it's a chemical. And it, you put it on the lawn, and apparently what it does, it gets the grass to stand up upright and it creates a faster playing surface. Right. And Duncan Hector said you can cover a lawn for a month for seven pounds. So what these professional groundsmen do, uh, just to get that extra half second onto a lawn, and it, it's really worked, it really has worked. They've been absolutely lovely. And you know, even with a little bit of rain and overnight rain, which we've had during the week, we're still seeing these brown patches uh, increase. Yeah. Um, and we, we've got to really say thank you very much to um, all the groundsmen uh, mentioning um, all the clubs. So Dulwich, Cheeling, Woking, Surbiton, Roehampton. And yesterday we played at um, the All England Club. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the groundsmen at the All England Club had promised that the mower was going to be lowered in height overnight and he was going to make his extra effort as well and oh, get good. them a little bit quicker. I know all the players that went there really wanted to get there yesterday um, and play at the Old England club. And here for the first time after hoop three we see Rob send blue to hoop one Yeah. and the idea is going to be to peel blue through hoop one going to yellow at hoop five but he didn't get a good rush on yellow which he would have wanted to take to corner four. Yeah, it just makes this croquet shot a little bit tougher. It's coming straight across the rush line. Shouldn't be a problem, but you don't want these little risks halfway through a break when you started. And again, where you'd normally be happy with yellow a little bit towards corner four from hoop five, this time you actually want it towards corner one. Yeah. Because you're going to be approaching from blue in front of hoop one. So always try and have the Pioneer on the side that you're going to be approaching it from. So just one or two feet past hoop five here. But the main focus is getting red behind the black and getting a nice rush back to hoop four. Red short, isn't it? Not it ideal. is. It's going to be a little cut rush. I don't think he's going to do a lot with this. He's probably going to try and cut it halfway and just leave himself a short backward takeoff. Oh, he's done a bit more than yeah. that with I, than I thought. He's played it well. Uh, ask question from Ailsa. Does Tom always play in gloves? I think he's got some kind of skin and sun allergy or something that's why he wears his long sleeves yeah so he's very light 
skinned, isn't he, and light hair. Yeah. So I think he's protecting himself from the sun. And throughout the Robertson Shield, yeah, he played in gloves, and he probably was pretty pleased about that because my hands were freezing and I was inside. Um, so certainly a good idea playing in gloves when it's absolutely cold. Um, but I think he's doing it for a different reason. Yeah. Nice approach from Rob. Yeah, he's in control. And that took a bit of wire. It took more than a bit of wire, Chris. So he's got a hampered shot. Does he need a referee? Yep, yeah, calls for a referee. I, I think the shot's easy enough, but it, it's best to get the referee in. Yeah, it's not a rush to blue, though, is it? No, he He's, really wanted the rush over south of hoop one, didn't he? Yeah, just get a bit of control, be able to position red near blue from closer than he is going to be able to. I think these hoops just demand a little bit more concentration. Um, so this is Jeff Dawson coming out. I think Jeff's a past chair of council. Very strong player, played in the President's Cup. And Essex made his nine hoops and he's set for an NSL. He's just rushing partner off the boundary. So a very nice quick turn from him. And did I say hoop four? Went three back, obviously. Sorry, what was that, Gavin? Uh, Essex made his three back. Yeah. He's making his leave. And Won't Rob has missed that, has he? No, he's playing, he's playing, sorry, um, he's playing red, so that's been missed. And we thought that was quite easy, didn't we? The way he looks at it, it seemed easy, but that's a really bad error. He's given Tom a four-yarder with a ball at his hoop and a ball at hoop five. And if, our, if Tom was maybe a little bit stronger, I'd definitely be peeling yellow to hoop three here. Get Rob on three and five. Yeah. Really bad clips to have. However, I think Tom will just hit this and go to four back. It may be a case of him just wanting a nice break round, not putting any... Stress on the turn. Yeah, I mean, Rob's only done the four hoops there before failing, trying to do some popping. Yeah. So I think it will just try and get round from here. I mean... What an easy start for your first semi-final. Football yeah. break is it, Was it a hoop error or was it just a careless hampered shot? It came from the poor Pioneer and then not getting the rush to yellow to tidy up the Pioneer. So it's sort of four consecutive poor shots. Yeah, right? I mean, it, he looked in very good hoop running position. Whether he's trying to get a kind of a forward rush out of the hoop or just a bad hoop stroke. I mean, it was most unlike Rob. And just giving everything away in the first game. Yeah, you, know, you really do want to put Tom under pressure, don't you? Because yeah. you think there's a chance that if you do, he might not be able to play those hit-ins and standard breaks that he was playing yesterday. You can actually get that strong start. Yeah. But giving him a laid four-ball break, this is almost the worst possible start for Rob. He's got a bad clip on hoop five. That's a ball that he's going to struggle to do a TPO. Yeah. Uh, struggle to go to one back and do a crossbar. Um, so, well, Tom's a little bit further away from hoop one than I would have liked, given how close black, uh, blue was. But I think we'll see that throughout the turn. Tom's break play might not be quite as tight. No. Um, but he won't be worried about running hoops from here. He'll just confidently run them. And the straighter you can get, the better on Atkins. So that's smoothly through. Yeah. And I always thought getting the first hoop under my belt was a big thing. Yeah, you can then just get into your normal break play, can't you? It's always nice to get that first hoop out of the way. Especially as a lot of the time you'll be approaching it from not ideal distance, you've always got a little harder stroke. But from this start that Rob's given him, he's through. And I think the other thing we should note is that having hit that red on the south boundary, he had to play a really big croquet stroke, sending red to hoop two. Yeah. And where Rob's croquet strokes all went past the hoop and put out bad pioneers, Tom's immediately put out a really good pioneer nice. from 30 yards away. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, it should be a confidence booster as well. It is feeling that immediately you've got the pace of the lawn 
Um, so the weather forecast for today is overcast this morning and just a gentle breeze and then this afternoon I think we're going to get some rain. Right, yeah. Um, and it may be light or it may be heavy and steady. Um, or it may be just simply be scattered. There seems to be lots of different forecasts out there. But if it does rain, the lawns are going to become easier. And the top players today, the people who think they're favourite, and that's going to certainly involve Mr Fulford, is going to be wanting to play on lawns when there's a bit of difficulty in them. Um, whereas as they get slower with rain, that's going to make them a little bit easier and potentially create less errors. So, Tom's put blue out as a pivot there. Strange choice. I would have sent it to Hoop 3 as a second pioneer. Yellow's three and a half yards south of the hoop. It's, it's not great. Uh, blue's handy enough there. But again, if you don't get a rush out of hoop two, I'd rather go to two balls that are together at yeah. hoop three than a pivot at the peg and try and get a rush on that to yellow. He should be able to get a rush after the hoop pointing wherever he chooses to. He's good close control with that ball, but I think, yeah, blue should have gone to hoop three there as another pioneer. Just a little bit of gusty breeze coming through. Uh, I mention this because it's the one element of weather that Robert doesn't cope with. As the wind gets up, he becomes more and more uncomfortable. Um, for me, it was rain. I was hopeless in the rain. <laughs> There's a lot of players that don't like wearing waterproofs. Yeah, I'd hated it. Inhibiting your swing. I'd just play in my shorts and maybe a sweater. Yeah, I think James Deef doesn't own a pair, does he, of waterproofs. He just carries on regardless. Um, so there's a bit of work here to do for Tom because he can't send red to hoop four so he's going to have to send blue to hoop four at the same time getting good rush on yellow well he's actually gone for sort of a halfway yeah. house of sending red to four and not getting a rush on blue um, and I would have liked to have been more on top of yellow than he is yeah now you're taken off to yellow across the rush line he's doing a little bit more with the blue and that's not a bad idea, because if he ends up running hoop 3 by 10, 11 yards, blue will be a nice ball to be able to hit. Gone a yeah. bit far on the black. Yeah, black's gone. He needs a bit of a cut on this, doesn't he? He wants half ball on the left, doesn't he? I was always... If I hit it in the middle, I could cope. If I hit it on the wrong side, yeah. I thought, dearie me, Chris, what have you done? That's a good shot. Hit it on the correct side. But from a lay four-ball break hoop and a half ago it's surprising how quickly it can deteriorate yeah this is a much longer approach than you'd want um, and again if we do get rain this afternoon any little hills that are being shown up by the fast pace of the lawn they'll even out because yeah. these lawns are fundamentally flat aren't they yeah so he's approached that's good but you don't want to keep leaving yourself kind of a foot and a half hoop no he's got unless you're straight he has got a good straight hoop here hasn't he and he's run it nicely yeah. to yellow so he's coped with that little bit of nervyness at the start and he'll just be trying to make sure he doesn't have to do that too often no, i mean it's eight yards through isn't it so uh, he wasn't mucking around there yeah so again this is the position where if you're at an elite level you send yellow to hoop one you send blue to hoop five and you peel yellow through hoop one going to hoop five the idea being to get robert on hoop three and hoop five making it difficult for him to get a standard triple or indeed a standard tpo out should he hit um but tom's just <coughs> keeping going on his four ball break the other game fletcher hit the short lift i think and has sent a ball up to hoop two and has got a tight rush on the ball behind three back. Over to hoop one. Looks he's played well. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's Robbie getting a equalising break. And yesterday we saw his standard tactic of going to one back. 
allowing the opponent to miss the long shot and then having a sort of very half-hearted go at peeling partner whilst focusing on the TPO. Yeah. And he didn't get a TPO yesterday. He broke down every time. It, the, the peeling turns yesterday were hard going. Meanwhile, Tom again has got a four-yarder here after heap four. Uh, hits it in the middle. Yeah. I think, from memory, Tom's mallet is a little bit heavier than most of these trimmers you're seeing around. I think he's got a tiny bit more weight in it. Um, so he might not have quite as good a stop shot. Interesting Tom waving his right arm there, indicating that Red's hilled yeah. towards the eastern side, going towards six. It's a bit of animation, which I haven't seen previously this week from him. You know, maybe there is a bit of uh, nerves or sense of the occasion. I quite liked to see that. I thought it showed he was just sort of relaxed. Yeah. He was happy to show a little bit of, oh, that wasn't quite where I wanted it. It just got a little yeah. bit of hill. Um, and he plays at a nice fluent speed, doesn't he? Yeah, and his, looking at his, um, the mallet head go through there it is very rhythmical, which would suggest it's a heavier head as well. Just letting the mallet head do the work. So I presume he'll be sending partner to two back here. Yep. Which I've seen literally everyone does that nowadays. In fact, Bobby Fletcher sends an early ball to six, doesn't he, after hoop three? He's the only one I see does that. And on Keith, a basis. Keith likes that. Yep. Okay. Keith is a big fan of the early hoop six partner. Yep. I hate it. I just think if you don't get a rush out of hoop four, suddenly you're playing bigger croquet strokes and you, you want to. Yeah. I want to keep the balls a little bit close together. Um, so, again, that's another point for people to know. Have a, have, a, have a play around with it yourself. Do you like putting a ball to hoop six after hoop three? Or do you like keeping them all close together? Um, it's not black and white, but um, there are certainly two schools of thought on that. But this early hoop two-back pioneer is a, is a standard play, isn't it, it? Yeah, everyone I've seen this week does it. Which has changed when I started sort of 10, 15 years ago. Not everyone did it, but this week everyone's been doing it. As long as you've got a good Hoop 6 Pioneer, it's not a problem. Uh, Marcus from America has been watching Tom apparently for several years now and has been seeing improvements in his play. Said he was very loose and running hoops from everywhere to start with and now he's tightening up his play and you see that no, no one's fantastic no one after two or three years plays tight breaks we all go through a loose phase and then we all get a little bit better gradually over the years so we can't be expecting absolutely pristine breaks from Tom he's still just a few years into his career and yesterday won his first medal in a world championship so the question today is can he change its colour would there be any thinking from Tom that, oh, I've hit my target, I've won a medal, and just relax a bit too much? Or do you think he's of a character that is like, no, I haven't even hit my target, I'm going to win this game? Well, I spoke to him yesterday, I was up in the Orangery, um, it'd be a couple of hours after he won, and I went out, I shook his hand, I said, congratulations on winning your first medal. He said, oh, I've won a medal, have I? So, so I, I yeah. isn't a target. No, he's here He's to come win. here to win. Brilliant. And, uh, well, I think, to be honest, he's probably come here to show that he's a real world-class croquet yeah. player. And he's done that. So that's a box ticked. And now he's got the chance to play one of the best players to have ever played the game. Yeah. Um, and he'll be thrilled to have got an early error out of Rob. And he'll be thrilled to have pottered around on this four-ball break. Yeah, very nicely. Is there much more strength and depth in America? I mean, this has obviously cemented his place, probably in future Solomons and Mac teams, but was there any pressure for him to do a good showing here? Well, very much so. Um, they've got a few people coming through. Um, people like Zach Watson, who we think are sort of newbies, they're now you know, playing at number two in the Mac. Lower right. down, um, you've got people like Cal Maloof, yeah, and you've got a player who considered himself quite unlucky not to get in the last Mac team, 
which is Sharif Abdul Wahab. He's improved greatly. I played him in 2013. I think he might have been like ninth or tenth person in the block at that stage. Yeah, and Sharif um, did very well in their eights. Um, and even here at this tournament, he's one of the three players to have done a sex tuple peel. Right, that is good. The issue with Sharif <coughs> is consistency and focus. Everyone knows Sharif's got the talent. Yeah. But is he a bit too flashy? For him at Robertson Shield, where solidity and error reduction yeah. are keys. And I think what people are looking for from Sharif are more basic error free games. Yeah. They know he's got all the talent, but can he put it together game after game? Um, so he's obviously on the verges of the team. Kyle, son of David, mm. uh, finalist in 2016. Yeah. Um, and a tennis pro. Um, you're obviously a very strong sportsman yourself. Are you a badminton, are you? Yeah, injuries though now. I've had to actually stop even playing uh, last winter, unfortunately. I still coach, but... But I think what we find is when we get a, a, a high-level sportsman come and pick up a croquet mallet, you you took it... You were good immediately but actually weren't you you were very strong yeah it's, there's a lot of touch I play a lot of golf which I think helps just with the feel of pace of different lawns as well and people like Bob Jackson um, international table tennis player won the national title many times took croquet up at 40 mm. and was immediately fantastic yeah just remarkably late isn't it to take up the sport and, and part of the thing is they've got the work ethic they've got the pra practice ethic they know how to practice and get better yeah um and there was rumoured that Bob had to hit 10 consecutive 10 yarders before he allowed himself breakfast <laughs> each day that way like, top sportsmen do funny stuff like that and that's why they're top sportsmen So Greg Fletch has asked, given Balding's accurate roque, should he be looking to more be more aggressive as the match goes on? He was surprised by his foregoing super shot opening, as was I, but maybe he wanted just to settle in game one, and I think you're right, as the match goes on, and now he's got a break under his belt, I think he will look to play super shots in later games. A um, little bit angled here, but he's through. His three back pine is a little bit too far east and he could take off to red from yellow because I think he's making a diagonal spread yes very much so or he could rush yellow to corner four and croak it back to the peg I think he'll take off again where red ball is it looks quite a brown corner that corner four definitely definitely so it's not you, a little bit of care needs to be taken so I'd rush yellow back to corner four and croquet it back to the peg. I think Tom will rush it to the peg and take off to red. I mean, he's rushed, rushed opponent ball to the peg, lovely. He's in full control around the peg. So he's just going to take off down to this three back pioneer. And again, if you don't get past it, or you hit a fast patch and you go off the lawn, it's not great. Well, you can be made to be look a bit foolish, can't you? But his touch, which I thought wasn't good at the Robertson Shield, mm. has looked much better on these greener, more even-paced, flatter lawns. I gather the, uh, the conditions at the McRob were nasty to say the least not just the elements of the wind and the rain but the lawns having some interest in them very much so um, particularly lawn two which is the lawn we always had on the live street that was the show lawn it, was it it was that, it, yeah it was the hilliest lawn at the club around yeah hoop one was it west of hoop one well yeah. you sent your hoop three pioneer out and you had to aim three <coughs> yards east right um so yeah really quite a tricky lawn to yeah. plan and then you got the wind and then you got rain um, and then you got a bit of sun um, so it's all challenging for them uh, when you put the pressure on top of it um, lots of people struggled on that on that particular lawn so Tom approaching from further away than I would like should get a forward rush though should 
Is it that close? That's a nice approach. And Luddy hit that down the right line because yeah. he's got really tight to yeah, it, hasn't he? Has. he? It's the tightest tube he's had all day. I really like the fact that he stalked that shot. Yeah. Lots of people have just sort of stood up to it when they're tight to the hoop, and you don't get the the line in your head quite as well. Or you just think it's so close to the hoop, I can't miss it, and then obviously... Hits into a wire. Yeah. So it's a good position again. How deep will he send Red here? I, I would have thought it would have been about two to three yards off the boundary. Um, he'll want to make it easy for himself. He won't be trying to defensify Red. He was just going to say, look, Robbie, you missed this. I'm going to do a TP. Don't care whether it's standard or delayed. I'm going to do a TP. Does it matter how far south or north Red goes in relation to the hoops? Keith was mentioning he doesn't like it much more than two or three yards north of the peg. And that's to try and get it. So no one ever fancies it from B-Bulk. Yeah. And you can lay up quite horizontally and leave a maximum distance shot about 19 19 yards. Rob's already shown fourth turn, he has a preference for shooting from A-Bolt. Yeah. Now, that was just giving a breakaway. So, he was expecting Tom to go around anyway. Now Tom's gone to four back, but there is a quite a big difference between shooting from A-Bolt, the shot Rob fancies, yeah. and shooting from B-Bolt, which will give a delayed triple instead of a standard one. So I think we're going to see Rob lift probably the red, and shoot from B bulk. If he lifts the yellow and shoots from B bulk, I think that's saying I'm going to TPO. Right. So that's going to be the difference. If he wants a direct TPO, he'll lift the yellow. If he just wants to re reply with a ball to four back, he'll lift red. So, Balding, he's got such a good peg ball there, he could actually probably put blue and black wherever he wants within limitations. Yeah, he can't he go more than two or three yards further south because of where yellow is. So he should really go south because he'll two be yards, thinking that definitely. Rob will be wanting to shoot from B-Bolt, will yeah. he? Uh, the more I think about this, the more I think Rob's going to play yellow. Because for Rob to go onto a lawn, hit him with red, and all he does is make five hoops, that isn't showing his talent. That isn't doing enough with the turn. Yeah. And he's going to want to try and dominate the match. Yeah. So I think he's going to lift the yellow and TPO. So he's roughly in the same position as uh, where Balding put his very first ball onto the lawn. Yeah, very hori horizontal, maximum distance. Last shot, you don't want to be playing from this far away. You don't want to leave red a double. Ooh, I think that's a double. a long double. It is a long double. Lee giving away the standard TP that we're hypothesizing that Rob doesn't want to leave. Uh, but it's going to make him think. It is. If that is some sort of target, Rob is going to take it. Let's have a quick look. Uh, Gavin's just popped out of our commentary booth. And Alison tells us that black is wired behind the peg and red can only hit blue so that's great absolutely great leave um, and it's quite a messy leave because blue's got a rush on black kind of pointing between the hoop and hoop five um, but it's just over hit it Alison was saying black's wired behind the peg black is wired has he got anything of yellow no yellow's completely wired maybe it's got it's a smidgen, easy. but you wouldn't uh, count on it. So I think we'll see the shot I mentioned. Yeah. You're lifting yellow to corner three and taking the long lift. And if he hits, I think we'll have a TPO. Perhaps more interesting, how many balls would he have off? He's only got a four point lead. You can only do the one really, I would have thought. It's just one, yeah. okay. Unless he's thinking that he's the better single ball player in a 1v1. Yeah, he likes his shooting. He's um, been happy with his shooting. I think he'll leave three balls on the lawn. But he's got to hit first. So quite a long shot. It's about 19 to 20 yards. He'll be aiming at the the ball on the, on the boundary. boundary. Definitely. 
and again he'll know which way it hills. Uh, he's played lots and lots of games on lawns three, four, two, one. Have these hills on these lawns been the same for yeah, a long time? they have. So I was mentioning the shot on lawn four, hills probably half a ball left to right. Um, I've forgotten about lawn three. When was, when was the last time you played on these lawns? Mm, good question. I think 2009. Oh. It's a long time ago now, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, oh, centre ball again at a gentle pace. Yeah. Is well, that his standard pace I, now? That is, unfortunately, I'm going to say, yeah. his standard pace because you can't guarantee the ball going straight. Yeah. However, he's hit, well, now he's hit twice in this game. Yeah. And he hit every shot other than one yesterday. Yeah. He's just had this, and it'd yeah, be fascinating to find after the match what he thought happened after hoop four, because we both thought it was straightforward. Yeah. Um, whether he's just had a little wristy flick at it and um, a missed, I don't know, but it did look straightforward. Um, so he's going for the croquet strike rather than a, a takeoff here. Yeah. Um, we have been asked a bit about lawn two, and um, Fletcher's made a one back weave, and he's made the standard um, one going, sending the hoop one ball towards corner one, and the four back ball northeast of hoop one, and Matthew's taking the the well, it must be 38 yard shot from almost corner one. Is he jumping? Looks like he might be. He did try to jump yesterday. Wow. He's jumped and he's and hit he's yellow. There. That's, That's unbelievable. So Red has jumped <clears throat> over the hoop from about four and a half yards away. Not only does it have to be struck down the right line, it has to bounce in the right spot. And it bounced probably an inch before yeah, yellow. Just and before. Hit it halfway up yellow on the on the bounce, didn't it? Yeah. His golf croquet skills are coming out this it, tournament. It's unbelievable. What a fantastic shot. Um so chance there now for Matthew. So Rob got behind to the uh, boundary ball well, but rushed into the peg. Yeah. And again, had Tom decided to defensify the, the red onto the boundary, yeah. Rob would be in all sorts of problems yeah. now to make it one. But because it's in the middle of the lawn, it really should be quite straightforward. And he chose to take off in the end from blue, so he's left that at hoop four. Yeah, he's got he's got time. Yeah. All he needs to do is a TPO. Um, yeah, he just wants, wants to make hoop one. And again, both balls have gone too far. Red oh. has now got a rush to... Sorry, sorry got a rush on red to the corner, yeah. corner four. And black's gone a third of the way to the corner. Yeah, it's a good two yards past. So every shot, every croquet stroke's been overhit by Rob so far. And in the old days, he could just cut rush, rush this yeah. to hoop one. I think now we'll be happy to get it three quarters of the way there. That, he's hit that so soft. And he's got it halfway yeah. there. Maybe only, yeah, probably halfway there. It's a nice takeoff yeah. line he's got. So red's probably two yards east of the line of one and two. So he's got a nice takeoff line to make sure he gets in front of the hoop. With the ultras, you just had to make sure you, you were in front, in front, didn't you? Yeah. Here he has to do a little bit more. And when you've been treating the lawn and it's been a little bit quicker, you, you kind of want to hit it a bit softer. But you've got to get past the hoop. So this is a tough shot. Pace is good. What a lovely yeah, shot. Yeah, it is, because there's a hill around that hoop as well. Yeah, so he's judged yeah. that lovely. One yard, five degrees, yeah, really well played stroke. Particularly after having over hit quite a lot yeah. of them. He knows this, how important this hoop is. He's just come back, line up properly on what should be a trivial hoop. But he's certainly, certainly given it care. Yeah, certainly early on in the tournament, people just walking up to these and smoothing them through, mm. um, not really thinking twice. And he's run yeah. that all the way yeah, he... between oh. red and black. Probably closer to black. I think he's going to pick the black off here. Yeah. 
Um, I suppose the one thing you'd say about this is if he does decide to hit the black, he can send it all over to hoop three for the TPO straight away. But I think black is two yards closer than red. At I think least he, two yards. I think he wants to hit black. Looking at both options. The so trouble is, if the thought of missing came into his head, that's the hoop one ball black? No, it's the four back ball. Oh, that's better. So I think that's why I said that you could send it over to hoop three, yeah. ready for the TPO. Yes. And equally, if you miss it, it's not your last shot of the game. Yeah. And it is two yards shorter. Um, I think this is the right shot. He's missed. That's, so that's two big errors. Big opportunities in the first game. And was she's the fact the that um, we're playing with these more difficult hoops, was that the reason Rob gave his one yard, five degree hoop that little bit extra? Yeah, I mean, he's. If the hoop wasn't there, he'd have been off the north boundary for a one yard hoop run. Um, because generally you could sort of hit it into a bit of the wire with an ultra yeah. and it go through three or four yards. Because um, the reception ball was nice and deep. It was, it was. So Tom's got a four yarder. And in middle. the middle again. Yeah. Uh, I think looking at players, when I'm their opponent, I'm looking at are they hitting these half ball, quarter ball, or in the middle? And I got, I start changing my tactics if they start hitting everyone in the middle. I'm going, no, this player is actually genuinely playing well. Yeah. I need to play to a slightly higher level. Um, so, now we're in one of the more interesting parts of the game, I think. This is hitting him with a, a ball where you're not going to make any hoops at all. Yeah. But you've got to make a really good leave. So, I'm leaving yellow three or four yards out of corner two. Okay. I'm probably going to put red over to the east boundary close to where blue is. And I'm going to lay up in corner one. Yeah, because obviously Rob isn't four corner one anymore, uh, hoop one is he's hoop two yeah. and five. And that to me, that immediately, yellow's a little bit too far in the lawn. Yeah. Um, so he's done quite well to get black near red, but it's not a rush anywhere particularly useful. I don't want to rush red up to hoop two, that's way too close to yellow. Yeah. So the only reason you do that is if you can get a crosswire, and he's way too far away from a very thin crosswire. Yeah. So I think red needs to be rolled over now towards blue, hit blue, ideally playing a good roll then, which isn't easy to get blue deep, almost in corner one. Um, so these not having got a rush on red, the shots become more difficult. Yeah, so it's not even going to attempt that. This is a now. safer line of play. Yeah. So nothing wrong with this in terms of it's easier than what I suggested, but we're going to guarantee I think because the balls are in the lawn that Robbie's definitely going to shoot and one of my points here is why put red there red's going to move why not move it two and a half yards further west or to the corner yeah all you've done is shorten red's shot by two yards sir um so and he's still got five yard on part of the yeah. ball and he had the angle to do it as you say he's left himself a long row okay he could easily have gone much close to blue. Just hit that quarter ball then, so not quite as confidently. Um, and Rob would have done more here. Yeah. He would would have defensified the balls. And Tom is basically saying, no, I want to make it easy for myself. Yeah. But even having said that, he could have moved red further away. Because red's going to move. I can't see yellow shooting from here. No, red's got to move. It's uh, the hoop one pioneer. And if yellow was halfway towards the corner, or three quarters of the way to the corner, red could go to corner two. So he's looking at a very thin wire with hoops one and four. Which would be handy if you got it. Yeah. As long as red and yellow are open on each other which he hasn't looked at, so I presume they are open. Uh, 
And if you leave black too far in lawn here, yellow can shoot at black into corner four and leave, leave red at hoop one and say, OK, here's your delayed TP again. Yeah. And I've got a probably a standard TPO if I hit for one good shot. Um, particularly if you hit on the right. So he's tried for the wire. Um, red can certainly see the black. We've got an angle here on this monitor oh, yes. to show us it's not a perfect <coughs> double. Yeah. Blue might be wired. There might only be a ball and three quarters between them. I think red's going to shoot at that. It gives a lot away. He's immediately going to have all four balls. But I think Rob's going to just fancy hitting this. Always that, like shooting east-west on these lawns. Is that because Rob's hit very well in the game already? Yeah. Or just the situation? He, it's a combination of the, the fact he thinks he's shooting well. And this is not a long shot by non-lift leave standards. And it's east-west that we like playing east-west shots. Um, and he might have a ball that he can hit if he misses by two balls. Yeah. Um, so if, if he's open on both, I think he's going to shoot at blue because he misses on the right. Right. Otherwise, he's just going to obviously shoot at, shoot at the black. So there's a lot in his favour, actually. Uh, plays with a bench half mallet to help his wrists out. And he's walking after that. And yeah, so that's exactly the ball. shot that I thought he would yep. take. He's aimed at the distant ball on the basis that he misses on the right. And if he misses, that blue was still in play, wasn't it? Yep. With a two ball miss on the right. Again, the leave wasn't good enough. Uh, red should have been further away. And blue shouldn't have been any sort of part of the target. Yeah. And that's quite interestingly now hit with the hoop five ball. Yellow is up at four back. So what he can do if he wants to is nudge blue in lawn, rush black to hoop five, and then try and rush out to hoop five to peel four back going to yellow and get a rush back to wherever he's punted blue to. Right. That's the aggressive line On of play. On a very delayed TPO. Yeah. The more neutral line of play is saying, no, I'm not going to TPO anymore. Yeah. I'm potentially going to go to four back. And I'm on hoop two, so maybe leave the four back ball in hoop two and try and encourage it to play. Yeah, he could probably have a, a go at the TPO, and if it doesn't, then just revert to that. Yeah, having a go at the TPO does mean you've got to rush from blue to hoop six. Yeah, um, which is it's going to lead to a lot of difficult shots. Yeah, and having had not a great start to the match. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rob do something more along the lines of going to four back with a, a cunning hoop leave. Um, he wants to get round and leave the lawn on his own terms. He, he does. This he is does. his third chance in this game. Yeah. Even getting the balls out in time to crosswire at hoop one and lay up at one back here. Um, you'd crosswire at hoop two, wouldn't you? And lay up in corner four. Has he got time to do that? And the answer is yes, he has. But he needs to rush probably down to corner four after hoop five to start digging the balls out for a crosswire at hoop two. Yeah. And that's going to be another option for him. It is rare to see Rob not try and do something more with a turn yeah. than simply make five hoops. And he's got a little bit of control out of that. So he can now rush back towards corner four dig black out up towards hoop two it's a half ball cut though isn't it to yeah take it to I, I, I don't think he'll get this all the way at the corner four judging by the pace he's been hitting his shots because it's at quite an angle and this should give us an idea about what he's trying to do now i don't think that was an attempt to get the no. crosswire at hoop two he actually hit it on the wrong side if yeah. he was there uh, doing anything so this is just picking up a break saying look i've been a bit rubbish so far i'm going to try and go back to basics for a few hoops Rush blue to corner three, 
croquet it towards one back, get a rush to hoop six, and dig black out over probably towards two back. You need good back ball control here. That's a lovely shot. Got a rush to <coughs> corner three. He's not in his flow yet, is he? No, but he's getting there. Yeah. These shots where he was overhitting it are now going in the right place. And rushes that up the lawn. And he'll have a nice position there to approach yellow up the rush line to hoop six. It's amazing the uh, game of croquet because if you're the in player, you're kind of leading the the game. Um, it's very much up to your opponent to hit and do something, especially if you can get a good leave out of it. But even though he's struggled today and Balding's gone round nicely, Rob is still very much in this game. So Blues get sent over to one back and Red nicely held for a rush on yellow. A little bit longer rush, isn't it? A couple of feet closer, maybe? Yeah, I suppose it could have been a couple of feet closer. Um, the one thing to make sure is you don't go to past it, isn't it? Yeah. And he has overhit a few shots. Yeah. So um, he's done quite well. He's within a, a foot or so. Two feet east to hoop six. Will he go back down to black to tidy it up, or will he go straight up to the north boundary after the shot? I think he'll probably go back down to black and send yellow to two back and get a rush on black back to blue. Um, uh, still just a wee bit uncomfortable with this approach. Now he's played a lot further back from that than I might have anticipated, so... Um, still just feeling the lawn out. Are there any hills to avoid? Wants to make sure he gets straight in front of the hoops and not at an angle. And oh. he's failed hoop six. Wow. Now is this down to anything? Is this, this can't be nerves, can it? No, I don't think it's nerves. Um, he obviously made the three hoop errors yesterday. He knows the hoops are more difficult than we've had prior to the quarterfinals. Um, Rob, uh, Rob would have played on these hoops a lot? Not, not a lot at all. Remember, he's um, taken a few years out from the game um, and won't have played as much as some of the other players. But he played the 13-14 at Robertson Shield and we used quadways there. Right. So that's 15 days of play. Yeah. Um, so he has played a fair bit, um, but maybe not as much as um, some of the other players in the tournament. Another nice hit in from Tom, and that's his hoop one ball. And he should be able to gradually get the balls out for his TP. Send yellow to hoop two, going to red. Rush red down towards black, and make hoop one off black. If he doesn't fancy going north of red, it's going to be a bit more difficult, isn't it? He's going to have a longer takeoff to, yeah, to black. You want to go north of red here. But his confidence level is actually so high with Rob making these errors as well. Yeah, not great balance on the shot. Fell over sideways on that half roll, but he's come out okay. He's got a. He's probably got half a ball at two yards, hasn't he? Yeah, it should be okay, but. There's but, still pressure on this shot. This is the shot that could set him up for a good chance at winning the first game. He's likely to hit this into the western side of the lawn rather than down towards black. He's wow. missed. He's missed. Well, yesterday we had the show lawn match between Robbie Fletcher and Jose Riva and we couldn't believe yeah. the standard. And if you'd have told me this was going to happen... Robert Fulford is going to make this many errors 
and now Tom's is that Tom's first? That's Tom's first ever. So yeah, let's not get too down on Tom. Tom's played fine so far. And it wasn't the easiest shot to get to red. No, I'm more shocked because he hasn't made any errors for two days rather than that actual error. Um, that was a huge opportunity there just to really punish Rob for his poor play. Yeah. So Rob's already been and had a look at the spot he wants to run hoop six to. I don't know whether that spot is about giving himself a double target. <laughs> I would have thought it's more about finishing the exact place to get a rush on yellow to Tom's blue ball. Um, it's going to be a five yard rush. I, I thought he'd run that much further than he was looking at, but let's see what he does. Yeah, this is pointing south of the blue ball. And meanwhile, on lawn two, we've had an absolute feast, haven't we? We've had a lovely ball around from Matthew, hitting in fourth turn. Yep. We've had a lift hit from Robbie Fletcher, going to one back, making a leave. And we've had that extraordinary jump shot yep. over hoop one. Been faultless so far. Just fabulous. So hit that in the middle, yep, confidence good. builder. He doesn't need to do a lot with yellow. He's not going to get a two back plan here. He's just going to get a dolly rush to one back and use the other three balls. Probably end up making two back off the black. This is just a case of got to get round and do a leave now. And get his head back in the game. I still don't think that spot's going through Rob's head. Rob's going to be looking at what leave he can make. Oh, for sure. And it's it's technical because it's not a one and four back v one and four back leave. It's mm. going to be a one and four back v two and four back leave. And there are so many more options available to you there. Um, going to have a look whether hoop five's in the way of rushing black to two back. Um, I still think he's going to just nudge yellow in lawn and get a dolly rush to one back as his first part of the turn. But what can he do? Can he make it as defensive as possible while still creating a length that might mean Tom might miss? What would you say is more important? Uh, giving Tom a longer shot or giving him a harder pickup? On easy lawns like this, the longer shot. Um, oh, he's decided to go straight to black. Now that is interesting. Now, there are two things about this. First of all, it might indicate black doesn't rush very well to two back. Yep. The second thing it might do is it might mean he's thinking of putting the black ball in hoop two. Yeah. And people might say, wow, how are you thinking about doing that when it's, it's 20 yards away from hoop two at the moment? You know, making hoop two alone is difficult enough, but to make it with enough control to be able to put black back in the hoop afterwards, isn't that asking way too much? But this is what he does. He finds methods, and even if he doesn't get it in the hoop, at least he's got the balls out quicker. Yeah. Um, just, so just takes a good rush from here. Good croquet stroke, that. This position. He's played that well. Very good shot. Just needs to keep going a tad. Oh, what a fantastic shot. Yeah. And now he's in position where, yeah, he can put black in or on that hoop. Um, on it's better, so just on the leg, because that means it won't rush to hoop one. Yeah. Uh, but in it is a sort of second prize. You've got it in your hoop, hoop two, and you're really encouraging the four back ball to play. So blue would be going in standard NSL position at hoop four. Yeah, which again is difficult because normally you'd have partner at two back. Yeah. So there's so much good play needs to happen. But when you're playing Rob, he just pulls out turns and you go, well, you didn't have a break at the start of this. You've made two or three hoops and suddenly you've got an amazing leave. Yeah. 
So yeah, he's trying to pop this black on the wire and he needs a rush south on yellow just to be able to play the, the load to three back from closer to blue. It looked like the balls when Fletcher was peeling yesterday, he seemed to be getting a lot of pull with these balls because obviously Rob's got to do a slight split shot there. I was um, just concerned it might pull and miss the hoop a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Black, very interestingly there, reached the hoop and then sort of fell back yeah. away from it. Um, so looking at our camera angle, I think it might rush to hoop one. It's still, it's still good because you can't hit it from B bolt, so I don't think it needs moving again. Yeah. Uh, but it's not as good as on the wire. Um, possibly through no fault of his own, because it did just seem to roll back away from the hoop. And Jenny's just gone down the cliff off the north boundary. Uh, it's taking off to get a rush from two and a half yards away. This Hit lawn, it. Yeah, this lawn tomorrow is going to be amazing if the sun stays out. Well, I it's, think it's going to rain this yeah, afternoon. It's so brown and fast, some of these corners. Um, she really just tapped that, and as soon as it had hit the brown patch, it just kept yeah. going. Um, so, yeah, these plate players are making the lawn look quite tricky, aren't they? Yeah. Um, it's not just we're having some poor play from the top players. The, the lower down players are making, <laughs> making the lawn look really quite difficult. So not a very good yellow from Rob. Sent short three back, but he's got his rush. He's now going to be positioning blue after he makes two back <coughs> over towards three back from further away. Um, and one of the options he's got he could leave blue over in NSL position or even off the boundary and come up and lay up on the western side of the lawn level with hoop six. So a reverse NSL. Yeah, and that's simply trying to say, I want you to play black. Um, whether Tom can be persuaded to, because uh, if he does hit him with blue, he's got a lot of balls to play with. Yeah. Um, black is on his side of the lawn, potentially rushing to hoop one. And yeah, it's. This is why it's kind of vital if you're trying to do the NSL to have the opponent ball as your pioneer. So you can get it as close to your preferred spot as possible approaching the hoop. Whereas here, because yellow is so short, it's what, a seven yard croquet stroke to get blue vaguely in the area? Yeah, and I. Early in the tournament, that would have been run by two to three yards, mm. and he's not risked it. No. He's just said, no, I'm not prepared to gamble on these hoops. But now he's got a six-yarder. And now he's got a six-yarder. The round of applause you heard was from Matthew Essek winning sixth turn following that fantastic jump over hoop one. What an amazing start to that match. Um, so Rob's six-yard return are okay. Lovely to see Sam Cuthbert and his family arriving, spending three days here for the weekend and Sam's improving all the time for those of you who have been following his progress after his accident in New Zealand. Um, so just starting to be able to walk on his own again and things going in the right direction there. So how far is Rob trying to place blue in position. Probably a yard past the line of three and four so he can run the hoop and get a rush back on it yep. into NSL position. Which looks like he's done so back in some kind of control. Tim Murphy has asked how many courts are there at Hurlingham Chris? Well we've got ten. We've got the four front lawns then we've got two croquet lawns that they normally call sort of the members lawns. Um, and they're about, um, I would say, 100 metres away from lawn four. And they're a very similar standard quality of grass to the front lawns. Very nice to play on. And it's a beautiful location. Um, um, rose gardens and flowers and trees round it. Um, all these lawns are literally, what would you say, 40 metres away from the Thames? Yeah, the Thames is literally just behind us. Um, it's lovely. And then probably 200 metres away, we've got the cricket pitch. And the cricket pitch is a cricket pitch. It's got a scoreboard with the Hurlingham cricket team play 
inter-club matches on it. Uh, quite a small ground, boundaries aren't very big, but they mow the outfield down for croquet events and it's nowhere near as fast as the front lawns but the the ground can get firmer out there the i played lawn nine there and it's better than some lawns i've played on around the country right it's amazing how good a cricket pitch lawn can be but but that is the best i think of the cricket pitch lawns the others are a little bit uh up and down dale shall we say yeah so rob's run three back he's taken quite a lot of wire and instead of running it past blue and rushing blue back he's now aborted that concept altogether and i think we might see him do what i mentioned earlier about leave blue over that side of the lawn and get a rush on yellow to the western side and lay up over here so two things about this it's it's saying blue's not in my break particularly i want you to move black but from tom's perspective it's saying black red and yellow are going to be all over my side of the lawn yeah all over hoop one side and if i hit him with blue i've got everything so rob often defensifies the blue even more than that this time he isn't he's trying to encourage here tom to either shoot blue Sorry, to either shoot black at blue from B bulk or black at yellow from A bulk. That's what he wants Tom to do. I think Tom should be playing blue and taking something short. Take the shortest shot with a ball that you can potentially win off. It's a kind of a binary leave in some respects because if Tom plays blue and hits he's got the chance to win and if Tom misses Rob's got a chance to win has not he? Absolutely yeah yeah so he's having a look at from the end of B bulk I think to see what the targets could be. Yeah you often leave a quarter of black hanging out and you don't want to leave that as a target with a full ball in the background, particularly knowing that Tom wants to play the blue. You've probably got to be thinking, if you're in Tom's position, that there's little point in taking a defensive shot with black that he doesn't want to play because Rob can finish from anywhere. He can. But he's looked as if he's struggling to me. Yeah. He doesn't look comfortable in front of hoops. He ran that two back firmly off the boundary. That was surprising. Um, we've we've seen him <coughs> grovel through four and miss a shot, and then fail hoop six. Um, there is something to be said for taking the defensive shot and saying, "Well, go on then. See if you can do a delayed TP." So we've got the opening on lawn two. Looks like Matthew's played a very short super shot. It's about a couple of feet past hoop five. And Robbie's gone to maximum distance spot and Matthew's missed to, what would you say, about five yards yes. north of corner four? It's a long way north. And uh, Robbie always goes to maximum distance when the super shot ball's that short. Right. Because he just says, I'm going to hit my 11 yeah. yarder. Don't care where the other two balls are, I'm just hitting the 11 yarder. And that's the shot he's lining up now. So Rob just taking a wee bit of care and going to be leaving yellow a cut rush that can be taken either to hoop two or to corner two and that's to defend against black shooting through to corner two knows he can take it either way straight away Tom hasn't thought about this he's just yep. lifted the blue he's taken the shortest <coughs> shot and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this this is a policy decision I'm playing my backward ball I'm hitting the shortest shot and I'm winning next turn 
Interesting, on lawn two, Robbie is not taking the 11 yarder. He's gone to the corner, isn't he? And he's playing the more defensive, longer shot from corner one to the east boundary near corner three to guard Matthew's shot back up the lawn, and he's missed. So Matthew now has probably about a 13 yarder that misses to where Robbie's red has missed to, or he can play yellow. Is yellow open, Gavin? So technically wired, but potentially. It's, it's full ball, but nothing on the line. Okay, so I think we're going to see Matthew stomp onto the lawn and take the full aggressive shot, red up the boundary. which misses to Robbie's ball near corner three. It's actually in corner three. So this is all or nothing. I like it, I think it's positive. It's a good line of play. You back yourself to hit it. If you hit it, you've got yellow in the lawn for a break. Now he's Matthews missed. Uh, more importantly, from our point of view, Tom has hit. So Tom's hit the Yellow. No, hit the red. Nice firm. Sorry, it's hit the red. Um, nice firm shot. Again, plenty of speed about it. That's going to go pretty straight on those lawns at that pace. Um, if Black rushes to hoot one, it maybe he might be tempted to rush that to one. Okay. But he's just got a dolly rush on yellow now, which will mean he'll have to move Black with a rush over to hoop three to get the standard triple but he's got the pace of his rush yeah. quite nicely. Should get a forward rush out of that. So, just approach from four yards fairly straight. These opponents who hit in every turn are quite difficult to beat, aren't they? Very difficult, Chris. They're, um... Oh, he's, oh. Again, he's hit it down a really good line, because yeah. that was definitely over-hit. So when you're hitting everything and having six-inch hoops every turn, it's an easy game. But, again, they're very mindful of these hoops. I mean, Surprised he's run it quite as far as that. 11, 12 yards through. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, but confidence-wise, you always want to have not nice tight rushes, move the balls where you want to move them, cut out the big croquet strokes. Just makes the break easier. Um, Keith and myself spoke about this position a couple of days ago, but you ideally want red and yellow both to be at hoop three. Um, and I said I liked them one a yard east and one a yard west, and Keith wanted them a bit further south than that. Both south of the hoop, did he? Yeah, he wanted them both south of the hoop, um, and I like them level with, because level with means whether you rush north or south of the hoop, they're good balls to be able to, to go to, putting the peely into position. Yeah. Um, so that's yellow moving over there. He's put it quite a long way south, hasn't he, Gavin? Yeah, it slowed up quite a bit. Not too bad, two and a half yards. Nice position on the red. Can send red over there as well. It's kind of an awkward ratio shot, this, I find. You know, you're moving, moving your ball eight yards towards the black. A little bit more than a drive, isn't yeah, it? I'm always hitting down on this a wee bit. It's kind of a third ratio. Oh, he hasn't sent it to the right place no, and he's lost blue. Blue's travelling. So red's just gone the wrong place. Yeah. Um, that's not where you should be putting red. Um, because he's a little bit further away from blue than he wants here, he might not get as good control out of hoop two to get the rush on black over to peeling position. Yeah, you don't want to be dribbling at these. 
And it's hit it fairly firmly and now approaching from <coughs> six feet away. And it needs to rush over. It doesn't want to roll black over into peeling position. Just a couple of loose shots. Sends black deep and he'll be running this off the lawn. You'll have a nice angle to rush black with though if it does go off the lawn. Yep. Good hoop. Yeah. Another confidence builder, isn't it? Yeah. So ideally, you'd probably rush south of red, and stop it into position, getting a rush on red north. Yeah. I'm not sure who's using the Terminator. Simon Jenkins said good to see a range of different mullets. Wh who's using a Terminator? Well, we can. The Invictus Fletcher is obviously Fletcher. Yeah. The two trimmers. Now what does uh So Robert Robert Fulford is using a trimmer. A trimmer. Um all things not look like a trimmer? Or is that it, a bit flatter? I'm not sure what that is. Um and Matthew I don't think Matthew uses a Terminator. So Simon says Tom is using a Terminator. That's interesting. So who makes those? So they're made by Mike McClure in Nelson, in the top of the North South Island. Oh, right. Um, sunniest place in New Zealand. I hadn't picked up on that. So it looks like black's in good position there. It, it does, it does. Got a nice position to put red down to hoop four, rushing yellow in front of hoop three. Yellow's just got a bit of furniture in the way to get north of the hoop, isn't it? It has. And again, it's like the, his first break, his, four, his hoop four pioneer was a bit short. So yellow misses black, runs into the back of the hoop and bounces to quite a nice place actually, I think can play a nice approach from there, moving yellow east as your escape ball and should get a good position at hoop three. Is there much difference with these hoops with doing a, a roll peel instead of a straight stop shot peel? They react similarly to, to most uh, other hoops in terms of, you probably get a better result with a stop shot peel so the ball's rolling. Yeah. Um, the the key difference is they're more difficult to run when you get an angled one. Right. Um, so getting straight in front of them becomes more of a priority. Um, so Tom's got a little bit of an angle on this peel but it's not from far away and I think he'll be expecting to at least get it in the jaws. He's done well because yesterday Definitely Jose and I think Rob Fletcher, both of them ran through hoop three far too far just to make sure they got through the hoop and then they had to not peel out of position. Whereas Tom's managed to still be in very close control. Yeah. So Rob Edlin White asking, do any of the top players use PFC mallets? And I think I've seen one or two around, but um, they tend to be more favoured by golf croquet players, I think. Um, There's quite a range of mallets around, which is good. Generally in the UK, good. most people use either the old pidcocks or trimmers. But seeing with the other nations, it's good to see what mallets they use. It's taking a lot of time over this, uh, lining the balls up. And quite right too. Yeah. If you get this through, you think you've won. So take your time. 
my question to you, Gavin, is is red a good enough hoop four pioneer to play this with a straight stop shot and not get a rush on yellow? No. You're definitely playing with pull, are you? I want the rush on this shot just for red. And I think I'm close enough to the hoop to guarantee at least getting it in the hoop. Ah, uh, so Simon's given up now and he's saying no, actually Tom's changed to a trimmer. And I, that's what I thought. I didn't I didn't think we had any terminators here in the semi final. Tom's, Tom's played that well, he's got the jaws and he's got a nice rush. I think if you were further away from the hoop, I would consider doing a stop shot and rolling down just to get that peel in because it's so important to get in after hoop three. Yeah, and looking at that really nice replay that our editing crew have put together there, it was a good peel. That black went into the middle of the hoop. Yeah, it's perfect position. And I think that would have gone through a couple of days ago. Yeah. Um, but now, probably rushing back after hoop four. Yellow's yeah, yellow's a bit tight to the hoop five for my liking, but I think if you can get the black out of the hoop four, well, after hoop four, it's going to be a help. And he's in perfect position to do that. Yeah. Certainly got the option either way, whichever he prefers. I mean, the other standard of play would be the go for the Wiley method, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'd be sending a ball towards the end of B bolt before hoop six. Um, but I think he'll be wanting to be quite positive, go back to it, rush peel it. The takeoff to yellow won't phase him. He'll he's, be comfortable with that. He's got the pace of the lawn, hasn't he? Yeah. And he's he's running his hoop strokes with a lot more control than Rob has been. Absolutely. So does it matter where Red was rushed to in this situation? Yeah, I would always like to rush Red to a position where I can croquet it to hoop six. He's rushed it into almost sort of no man's land here. Yeah. And he can't he can't get it closer to hoop six while going to black. Um, so that is going to be his hoop six pioneer. And it's not in a great position. And he just wants to make sure he's, he doesn't get it down the line of his takeoff. Correct. Which is actually fine, it's due west. So rush this through by two yards. <coughs> making sure you get the hoop out of play, but still, you don't want it too close to the boundary. Any point in trying to roll black closer to, to penalt, hoop six? Well, if you were doing that, you'd rush it all the way off the north boundary. Um, playing with the Humpties, people have been doing that, yeah. because they pass roll so easily. These don't. These play rushes and stop shots better, and I would not be playing the pass roll with this set of balls. So long takeoff. Make sure you're in the eastern side so you can't be crosswired. Pace looks perfect. Yeah. He's still looking at it. Well, you can't argue with that, can you? No. That's just on the blade of grass. What a wonderful touch shot. I'd possibly argue that yellow was a yard too far north because now it's going to be tough to get the forward rush which I think you probably need, really, going to black. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy getting yep. a forward rush from there. That's, that's almost where I'd want it. Nice little stop shot. Run it by a couple of feet. Did you have a good stop shot ratio? Did yep. you use a wooden mallet? I used a wooden... A, a real wooden mallet. had wooden end faces. Um, oh, that isn't, that isn't very good. The yellow should be a yard further there. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the problems with these new mallets the stop shot ratios. So I mean, he's, he's run the hoop well. He has, he has, yeah. If yellow had been where I expected it to finish, he'd have a nice rush. So he'll cut this just south of peg high and he'll need to play a reasonable croquet stroke. And again, this red isn't perfect. Just a little bit loose at yeah. the moment. And where would, uh, are you trying to get yellow right by the one back hoop? or a little bit south? Because I'm not confident of peeling hoop six, peeling penult after hoop six, yeah. I'm going to put this two yards north of one back and a little bit on the eastern side. 
Well, that's short, isn't it? Blue? No. Your blue's blue. short. I was looking at yeah. yellow, actually. Yellow is quite good. good. Um, oh, that's not bad. Blue's run out a bit, isn't it? He's going to have to roll black into peeling position from a long way away. Uh, but yellow's are really quite nice there. Yeah. And cuts it over. That makes the approach line for black to get into peeling position much easier. Um, what, sort of six foot? Shorts, yeah, like just give yourself some wiggle room. Give yourself some wiggle room, try and run the hoop sticks past it and rush it back again. But yeah, you don't really want to be rolling this to two foot position, it's too risky. And what would you give Tom's odds here from finishing? Well, you'd think he'd be eight out of ten, even with this pressure. Well, he did three TPs against Harry Fisher, yeah, he only did one yesterday. But this is now a standard TP position. It's not delayed. Yeah. Um, the balls are in good position. Um, he's got a little bit of a longer rush to six than I would like. But he's actually managed to place black quite close. It is very close. Um, so, again, approaching from three feet away rather than one foot away. But he's in good position. You'd have taken this position off he's, this hit He's him. really unhappy with that oh, approach. No, so short. he's under hit the approach. And, well, it's not very angled. It's about 15, 15 degrees, do we think? 20? 20, yeah. You don't need to <coughs> jump it. <laughs> you can certainly just hit it smoothly through. And that 80% didn't last very long, Gavin, it? Did didn't, it? no. And... It's lucky you don't do percentages for your job, Chris. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, that is unfortunate. That was just almost lack of concentration. Well, it, it was in the, good bad, position. the bad hoop six pioneer meant he rushed it three feet past and he played a bad approach and they played a bad hoop stroke. And as you said earlier, these things build. Yeah. And Rob's not looking at his two yarder with red, he's looking at his five yarder with yellow. And that will immediately hit red over towards four back for the, the four back peel. And he's on hoop two, remember? Yeah. So this is about as easy as it gets, providing this first row okay is made. And he's hit that half ball. She's good enough. He'll go to yeah. blue, peel it through hoop six, get a dolly rush on black to hoop two, and he'll have a standard triple. And are you going to say, how often is he going to do that? And I'm going to say over 90% again. Oh, you know, I, was, I thought you'd stick with your 80%. No, he's better like than Tom. <laughs> um, this is as routine. This is as, as a, standard as you yeah, will get, isn't it? This is one of the best players, if not the best player ever to play the game. Looking a little bit nervous around his hoops at the moment. Is he looking for an early four-back no, here? No, 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 won't worry about that. He'll just send it to hoop three, and I'm not happy with where he's got no. the yellow. I just want it to be a bit closer. I don't want to have to take off from the jaws. He's just struggling with his the, the speed of the lawn, isn't it? A wee bit, yeah. So he's good rush peel, and now he's got a good position to get a, a good rush on black to hoop two. Um, Robbie's just made two back on this um, break. It's his sixth turn. gets in reasonable rush to hoop two any reason for sending blue so far down the lawn or is it just, just trying to get a better hoop four pun here he also had to move it out of the way yeah you know it's a little bit in the way of his rush to hoop two um, so under full control now he's rushed dead in front of two um, should be able to get a rush back to blue, get a good hoop four pan here. And it, this is as routine as it gets. Um, I'm trying to remember how many triples he's done. It's about 1,400. And that's only in singles games, Gavin. Yeah. And that's only in competitive singles games. So yeah. I'm going to say he's done 6,000. You would have thought the amount of practice that goes on. He would. I mean, the psychological side of this game is interesting because both players have been up and down. I mean, Rob wouldn't have thought he'd probably get back on the lawn, possibly. 
it's been just like Fletcher Reaver. Yeah. This has been one player's going to win, the other player's going to win, the other player's going to win, and until they peg out, yeah. you've never actually known who's going to go one up. Whereas normally we just think these turns are going to be smooth, take advantage of these even paced lawns. Once you're away from the boundaries, which go a little bit browner, all these central areas and around the hoops are very even paced. Yeah. Um, often when you're playing on a quick lawn, you get glassy areas around the hoops and you have to go, oh, I want two pioneers at that. I don't run that with control. And that makes a peeling much more difficult when you're actually having to focus on your four ball break at the same time. Yes. But all the areas around the hoops are fairly straightforward. And this should get Rob into a nice uh, smooth way of playing gets confidence back up and if he completes it one nil up in the game and he'll have been really lucky again so we we should remind viewers that in the first round of the knockout Blake Fields was beating him in the third game and had a straight double peel to finish and played it with an Irish peel and the peel he went down nicely in front of over his ball finished in the draws just at a slight angle yeah and he just tapped it through and it didn't go through and that was to knock him out first round so every time you someone wins a world championship they get lucky I've won two I got lucky on occasions in both of them and I really haven't seen any win, one win a world championship other than Matthew Essek winning the golf croquet last year who I didn't think had been lucky at mm. some stage and nothing wrong with being lucky. Oh, no, you've got to be lucky, haven't you? Uh, lucky might be as little as the opponent misses a lift shot. Yeah. You know, some people say, well, that's not lucky. You've left a good leave. Well, sure, but your opponent might hit it. Mm. And yeah, someone hits three or four shots against you in a match, it turns it on its head, doesn't it? So, Rob. So you can play this with a nice stop shot peel. He can. He's a bit further away than I anticipated he would be for this shot. I think he did hoop and roke. Okay. And that's bounced, bounced off. off. And again... Is he impeded? He might be impeded. I think with an ultra that might have sogged into the jaws. Yeah. And it's bounced off now. You see this impact. Now, it's probably gone in the middle of the wire. That might have sogged into the jaws, middle of the wire. Uh, so he's calling a referee on again. He's already missed one of these hampered shots. I, can't, I literally can't believe it. From your 90%, is you changing that now? Oh, it did miles lower now. Um, I had it well over 90%. But as soon as you miss the four-back peel, yeah. the turn becomes a lot more difficult. Even for these multi-peelers like Bamford and Fulford, um, you're going to have to start getting rushes out of hoops. And whilst there's no obviously difficult line of play, when Rob's already shown he's nervy around hoops and he doesn't want to hit them as gently as he might need to to get rushes mm. out, the whole turn is going to become more difficult. And we've got Samir Patel, Chairman of Council, coming out to watch the hampered shot. And... That's, uh, that's what we expected him to do after hoop four, really, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that was ten, still quite a technically hard shot. He was playing like a small small little jump shot, wasn't he? Yeah. Hit it full ball. Had to hit down on it. So, small chance of a bottom bevel, which is what Samir's mm. looking for. Small chance of a double tap. But hit down on it, and you, you saw Yellow just jump a tiny bit. Yeah. Yellow, and as soon as Yellow jumps, that's a good sign that it's not a double tap, isn't it? Yeah, because you've hit it solid. And a nice roll down there. Yeah, but still work to do here. When you're going to be sending black up as an escape ball, you don't want blue as far south as that. So is he going to rush back up to four back, put black out as an escape ball, and rush red back down again? Or is red just too far in front of the hoop and you can't get that type of good position? Yeah. I presume it's your personal shot preference of whether you're stronger at the croquet shot sending it down from south boundary yeah. or, or whether you prefer the takeoff I so suppose. This is, this is going deep 
and this is saying I want a club hoop four off the boundary. Yeah. I don't want one of these gentle hoop shots that I've been struggling with. Matthew hits the lift shot, which was a uh, MSL or NSL, and he's lifted the ball at two and taken the short lift and hit Robbie Fletcher on the east boundary. So that's now seventh turn of that game two. Matthew game up. And Rob smashed through. So Rob's got the choice here, isn't he? He does. There's a bit of room to send your escape ball to, but if you miss that kind of little area, it does make the, the peel going to six quite tricky. So he's decided to focus on the escape ball. And lots of people playing peeling turns early in their careers will focus on the peely. And for this peel, the escape ball, that's the black, is more important than the red. Very the red can so, yeah. float seven or eight feet in front of the hoop, allow you to approach it from distance and rush it in front. But you want black in a good position where you can peel and get a rush to hoop six. And he may decide to take off to his hoop five pioneer because he can't get a rush on red. I mean, you'd want to move red a lot further away from the hoop anyway, don't you? Yes, that's a good black, isn't it? Yeah. And he's accepting the long takeoff. Can just play south of blue, can't he? Yeah, Blue's in a very nice position. It, he should get the forward rush out. I like it level with the hoop. Do you? And then I can play short of it. Right. I don't want to have to take off past it. Um, so I don't like Blue personally. But if you took off past Blue when it's level, does that start giving you problems? I, n I can normally feel that shot better, just making sure I'm level with it, right. uh, short of it. When there's a ball and you have to take off past it, it becomes trickier. Yeah. And as you've seen, he's finished a long way short of this. It's quite wide as well. Yeah, he's guaranteed the hoop five doesn't come into play. Yeah. Which is sensible. But I thought he would have at least reached the blue. Yeah. Even if he only finished level with it. Yeah, it's a slightly longer hoop approach, isn't it? It's a good seven feet, isn't it? Because you do want to get within the 12 inches, really. It'll punt blue well forward. And Yellow's okay, but yeah. I don't think he's got as much confidence at this next shot as he started the match with or had two days ago. Yeah, you can see this coming peg high, can't you? Oh, it took a bit of wire and yeah. he's got a lovely it's rush. Nice. So hopefully that's a confidence builder for him. Nice rush to the east boundary. And then he'll be able to send blue over to one back coming up the rush line on red to rush it in front of four back for the peel. Slightly awkward line there, he's got to go through the balls to get to one back I think. I back. think he's far enough south that he should be okay. His back ball's not moving too far which is good. No, just about, just about enough room wasn't yeah. there? A little bit uh, off. A little bit hard. I don't like sending that ball past the hoop. It's gone out of the box, hasn't it? One of the things I've been watching is Lawn 4, partly because Jenny's playing on yep. it. This patch up by hoop 2 it's is really, really fast. Yeah. This is not 13 seconds, this is 16 up here. There's, but there's also a definite hill. Yeah. It's yeah. a good few inches below. Um, so that's going to be enormous fun for the final. There, it's hopefully the rain holds if off. If the rain holds off, yeah. So Rob's in great position here able to play this shot with a straight stop shot yep. you should at least get the jaws yep. you should peel it to be perfect and a dolly rush to six yeah and he's got the peel yeah he's got the rush <clears throat> played it positively so back up to 90 percent chris well i do want to see the rush to hoop six before has he got a slight cut rush um when you're playing a standard tp you don't have to rush to your hoop from eight yards yeah. away and it's okay as a rush but it's not on top of the hoop yeah um and rob would normally play after hoop six to send red to two back red to not black to two back no red to two back that would be a, a normal play for him again people on early on in their peeling careers let's just watch this shot let's just watch this because he's going to hit this more firmly than he would normally hit it off the boundary. Off the boundary. Now, isn't that fascinating? 
it seems the, to me it seems a bit bizarre because now he's left himself a, a six yarder nearly it is a six yarder and I think it's the hoops are in his head yeah they are um, and he knows he's shooting well so he knows if I can take the hoops out of play and just run them I'm going to hit my six yarders <sighs> But he's already missed, what was it? Do we think about an eight yarder? Yeah. Early in the game? Yeah. But he's hit two long shots yeah, as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he started off really well. Um, but I, you don't want a six yarder in the middle of the game. I mean, he said to balled it, but that that's worrying for the whole match. It is. Of his way he's approaching these hoops. And the whole tournament. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned the, I was expecting Red to go to two back, whatever. Uh, and lots of people in early on in their peeling careers will try and keep the peely as close to the hoop they're yeah. trying to peel as possible. And this is a good example of prioritising your break. The red, which is now for penultimate, and will eventually get peeled through penultimate, is going to go all the way down to two back, miles away from its hoop, and he's going to peel it later on in the turn. Yeah. And he's just saying, no, I want a good two back pioneer, get control of my break, get it under control, and I'll do this penult peel later on. He had a very nice takeoff there to get Rush into corner two, because obviously his pioneer was alongside of Wombat. And it's one of those rushes I was mentioning in his earlier matches, where he's rushed it a yard short of the corner. Yeah. And early on in his career, he'd have just smashed it off in yeah. corner two. Loads of power, loads of panache, straight, straight into the corner. He's turning more into a pre precision player almost yeah and his croquet strokes are better yeah um, but yeah he needs a good stop shot now send red a bit further needs to keep rolling it's not bad is it it's not bad it's, it's pretty good now it's just carried on rolling actually and he's got a little cut rush again to one back and I normally swap my pivot over at this stage, Gavin, and I'll make the hoop off blue, and I'll send blue over southeast of Penult, and then I'll get a rush on black to the west boundary, level with hoop five, send that to three back. So just swapping your, your pivot over just allows to, you to get better control. Just to make the croquet shots shorter? Shorter and get a better ball um, at Penult and avoid a long takeoff. I think we'll see Rob do the same. So you expect what blue west of uh, east of hoop six? Yeah, maybe it's even southeast of hoop six. Um, depends exactly what shot you like playing, but I, I, I like it fraction southeast because I like rushing that ball down to the south boundary and croaking it up again. Yeah. Um, Rob might be happier with just takeoffs. So cut this a little bit west. And then you're sending out your three-back pioneer from closer and with a straighter croquet stroke. Yeah. Has he hit that hard enough? That's very close to red. Yeah, so Robbie Fletcher could definitely play this with ease. That were, that's where Robbie would have played it to, deliberately. His stop shot's amazing with that mallet. But Rob hasn't quite got enough, and he'll probably leave himself a seven-foot rush to two-back. Especially, you know, it's not ideal if you're trying to get great control out of the hoop. So yeah, to pedal. had to put yellow a little bit further yeah. than he wants, and he's got a six foot rush now to two back. Um, Blacks. That's gone on a foot or so further than he would liked. Yeah, and I like black level with the hoop um, in this position. It, it's, it's good from wherever you're approaching. If you rush blue south and croquet north again, level with is okay. And if you take off from blue, then level with is again quite good when you're taking off to a ball and you can just finish short and hit it in front. Yeah. So again angled, wants to run that to get a rush yeah. back to Penult and hasn't done. So ideally would have tried to rush that in front of Penult and peel it straight away. Yeah. And now Blue's in a bit of an awkward position because it's the slightly north west of the hoop quite right I mean blue's bad that is a bad shot to put blue there uh, fantastic cut yeah, rush that, that's the old cut rush forward I remember when I started playing the game I mean that's ridiculous that angle yeah but the difference was he would have had the extra 
10% power to have got it in front of the hoop. Yeah. Um, so really good shot, and he'll be able to get a tight position now to peel penultimate before four back, but it will possibly involve taking off from blue to black. Would he not rush down South Boundary? I would. I'm just questioning whether Rob will, because is the hoop a little bit in play? I think he almost needs to go directly past hoop five, doesn't he? I wouldn't be surprised to see him just pop red in peeling position, rush blue east and take off to black. Not what I'd do, but he's better at the take off and roque. So still 90% Chris? Yeah, higher? yeah, yeah. I think we're, we're still in the sort of 90 plus range. You don't want this too close to Penalt, do you? No, because you, if you put it really close, and I think that's too close. Where does he put red? It, I think it's just too close. That means you have to get a rush out of three back yeah. now. But he has chosen my method of rushing blue yep. south. Yeah, that was interesting. I thought he'd uh, just tap it as well. He's, he's managed to cut that directly behind hoop four. And there's a big area you can send blue into here. Um, you can send it almost level with Penalt, or you can send it three yards, four yards south of level with Penalt. Even even two feet north of level with Penalt's okay. But the number one priority, as you mentioned, is you have to get a rush on the black up to Penalt. And we've seen Rob be wary around hoops, haven't we? Well, yeah, but especially with the Peely being so close to the hoop. Yeah, hasn't given himself a margin of error, really. Right. I'm just wondering if Blue has travelled a bit too far east to get it in good position. Whether the hoop's in the way or not. One of the things I'll say about putting Red that tight is if things go wrong, he needn't go to it. Yeah, and just do a straight double. And just do a straight double. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if he can put out a couple of good croquet strokes here and show a little bit of confidence yeah. running the hoop. Yeah, I mean, if, if Rob can finish this game off in a bit of style, that will give him confidence into the second game, which is a, a massive game. You can go 2 0 rather than the 1 all or 2 0 down. It's huge. Just think about blue there, Chris. It's kind of okay ish, but. It's bit... Very good, I think. Yeah. I think you can peel Penalt with a straight stop shot and leave a dolly rush too. Well, you know, a four foot rush to four back. Giving himself the room yep. to move black well up the lawn. Can he approach it to one foot straight? Looks good. Yeah, he's he good, should good get a rush out of that, shouldn't he? Nice smooth stroke. That's yeah. good. That's good. And that's just starting to show what we yeah. expect, isn't it? It's back in control, isn't it? Um, so black, you rush up towards red, and you normally send it out as your penult pioneer, but it's going to go south of the hoop. Ah, the daily jelly babies have arrived. Thank you very Thank much, you. Stephen. <coughs> and pleased to see four black ones today, Gavin. Yeah, black we've one's a good one. A little up. bit low on the black jelly. I'll leave those for you, Chris. Thanks. You're doing the work. <laughs> um, so yeah, black a couple of yards, maybe five feet south of the hoop, just so you can send red to rover from closer. And it takes black out of play, not in the way of getting a rush to four back. I like seeing players where they've got all the balls within a couple of yards. It just shows they're in control. <laughs> Having said that, he's actually gone into I know, the red. You've okayed it, didn't he? It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. You don't need to peel this. You can jaws it. I think Rob will probably want to peel it. Um, and that's going to leave him bit needing a, to play a good stop shot here. Bit of an angled rush as well. There's not a lot of room there. That's in the jaws. And that brings us back to 
a position we were looking at the other day. And actually, I saw Alison, who's standing in the tent, play it the other day. So as she's in play, um, I won't mention too much about what you might do here. Um, but there are various options as to how you can finish from here. And it'd be very interesting to see which of them Rob takes. And simply because of how good black is, and he's put it this two yards south of the hoop position, it does give you the two options now. Yeah. If black was a genuine penult pioneer, you would have fewer options. Uh, so let's see what Rob does. Is he going to smash this through the hoop again? I think so. I think it's cruel to not tell them what the options are. I'm going to go and get some water. <laughs> <laughs> so Alison's disappeared, and um, Alison didn't have as good a black the other day, and. She opted to rush Peel Red through and then stop it down to Rover and leave quite a long return roque on black to Penult. Whereas Rob can rush it through by a yard to take the hoop out of his backswing, can croquet it down there quite comfortably getting a rush on black to Penult because black's got that extra two yards further south. Yeah. Or what I like to do from here is go straight to black, rush black on top of red and line up an Irish Peel from the middle of the jaws where you can guarantee it misses the peg because you've lined it up a ball and a half one side. And yeah, it's not going to finish directly in front of Rover, but it should be close enough that you're guaranteed to be Irish peeling. So let's have a look what Robert's going to do. I think he's going to go to red first because of how good black is. That's just a preparation, isn't it, before the penalt peel of placing your Pioneer, knowing what the sequence is likely to be. He's, yeah, he's rushed that really nicely. Yeah, again, make sure you put blue out of the line of croqueting red down there. As I said, that's gone through. Well, it's probably put it through four feet, but it's still an easy stop shot, isn't it? Yeah, you're only moving yellow five feet. And he's no. actually rushed it to the side, yeah. so the peg isn't even in yeah, play. Yeah, that's very handy. Especially with a bit of pull. White looks good. Mm. It's carried on a bit. It has. And when you're rushing to peeling position from the side, you're going across the hoop. Yeah. And I'd rather be rushing from two yards straight than one yard to the side. Definitely. So it just needs to ball this one. Just to keep confidence, that's good. So, be looking at putting two side balls round over? I think this so. This will be a flat-out uh, Irish? Actually, Rob doesn't normally play two side balls anymore. He plays one side ball and one short straight ball. Right. So, about seven or eight feet behind the hoop. Yeah. So that if you run the hoop by the unluckiest point and can't hit your side ball, yeah. you can still hit the short straight ball your ball would have gone through the hoop by a couple of millimetres, yeah. maybe. Um, so I think we'll see that. Again, he's, uh, he's given the hoops a lot of respect. No, in, in his head, he's won this game. He doesn't want any hoop blobs, uh, funny he, little errors. He's been in this position thousands of times before. And the vast majority of them, he's walked off the lawn winning this turn. So, again, going to be surprised if this goes two yards off the south boundary. I think from here he might not put it seven or eight feet behind. He yeah. might put it three and a half yards behind. Yeah. And getting a good rush on blue, so blue can be the side ball. But he would be looking fairly sort of straight behind the hoop, would he? Yes. As long as he if he can get red there. into play, yeah. Yeah, doesn't want to hit red. Doesn't want to put black into Rover. So yeah, he's gone straight between them. And it's it? hilling. That's hilled quite a long way, I think. So that's certainly not a ball that you're going to be hitting having rolled through Rover, I don't no, think. That's a long way east now, isn't it? It's just a ball that's, that's a... randomly down there. Um, Blue's hit hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, not, he's not shaking his head. He's not on top of this. Because now he's putting Blue into a side ball position across, across the line. The line. Um, so you can't guarantee it's going to be in perfect position to save you should you grovel through the hoop. And he wants a really exact rush on red. 
which you should get, but. So blue's short. That's not a side ball. You could imagine running it so the right hand one yep. was completely blocking you. He's rushed it in front and he now he will Irish peel from here. Do you expect this to be quite a hard hit shot? Yeah, this is going to go two yards off the boundary, I would think. Um, if it catches no wire at all or just flicks off one wire. Um, in fact, Balding had a very similar shot yesterday and croqueted the front ball off the lawn. Did he really? Yeah. Okay. Probably had probably another foot longer peel, but the front ball sailed off. I think he must have hit it very cleanly. And are you happy just to jaws yellow, or are you trying to get yellow through with some momentum? I would be thrilled to jaws yellow. Yeah. I would be happy to anything which has yellow in front of the hoop. Yeah. If I play a really good shot, yellow's going to go through. But again, hitting the ball straight wasn't necessarily one of my skills. And these shots, even running the hoop from here, is failable. And when you're playing a croquet stroke, if you don't hit it straight, it doubles the error. Right. Because the ball splits out at double the angle, yeah. doesn't it? So this is almost like trying to run the hoop from twice as far away. And hitting it that hard from this distance, is the ball skidding rather than rolling? I think it, w it will still be skidding. So that, that's against you as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Played, played that well, is he? No. No, I this mean, is awful. he has to hit the red here, I think. I don't think Rob's... He might be able to play a flip over the top. The, uh, the red ball literally went into centre wire. He's trying to look at the flip, which is his normal jump to get over that, and then he would hit black. Black's deep enough to hit. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering whether he's going to go, no, I'm going to run the hoop into red, croquet it to the peg, and see where that finishes. Maybe if it finishes close, rush another ball close for a combination peg out. Yeah. Um, or maybe even just hope to get a bit of wire and have a seven-yard peg out. So if he did um, a half jump and clip red, that wouldn't be deemed hoop and roke, is it? He's still live on the other two balls, or three balls? No, so if he jumps the hoop and hits red here, yep. that's a roke on that's red. That's a roke. So red would have to be still in the jaws for right. it not to be hoop and roke. <clears throat> and Rob's jump shot is not a strength in his game. I can just stand over this, yep. standing up, hop over the red to the boundary, yep. and then probably, knowing me, miss the black. But Rob can't play the standing up jump shot with yep. his Irish grip and would have had to have moved his hands down the mallet and sort of played a flip. And because of how close the hoop is, yep. he's worried about following through and sort of hurting himself. Right. Um, so he's taken my second line of play, yep. I've gone through and nudged that to the side, and two options, you can either, well, three options, I think. You can go for a, a mid-pace one, where you finish at hoop six. Yeah. And then move the other balls off the lawn. You can go for a dead weight one and get a rush on blue, probably, either back to the peg for a combination peg out or yep. back to black. Again, hoping for a combination peg out. But to do that, red needs to finish probably within eight inches of the peg. Right. So as soon as we're starting to get a foot away, I don't think Robert's going to be a fan of a, trying a combination peg out. So you don't have to decide on the combo peg out until you've actually hit this shot? Well, the third option I haven't mentioned is he's open on the peg from eight yards away, line it up, smash it. Okay. Full out. All or nothing. All or nothing, knowing you're going to give Tom a standard finish if you miss, because red's going to miss into the bulk. Yeah. So Tom's going to have every ball in the world. And I don't think Robert's going to go for the smash. It's too black and white. Yeah. I think he's going to go for either the gentle go, followed by maybe a combination if he gets it really close, or the mid pace, genuinely trying to hope it goes straight, yeah. missing to a yard short hoop six, which we should mention is Tom's hoop penultimate. And if he went for the mid-pace option and missed it, would Rob peg his ball out? Yeah, he would. He'd be saying, I could hit the peg from six yards away next shot. Yeah. If you miss your lift, I'm going to hit that. 
So three options. I, generally, I don't know what he's going to do. Um, I would be very surprised if he goes at full pace. And full pace for me is hitting this croquet stroke to go 30 yards. So, yeah. So that's the mid pace go. That's not a dribble to the peg. Um, so that's not an attempt at a combination. He's left it closer, so it's guaranteed more or less to hit next turn. And now he'll be trying to defensify the blue and the black. And let's just have a recap of the clip positions for Tom. Um, Tom is on one back with the blue and he's on penultimate with the black. So Rob will be trying to take balls away from those areas. He's already put one at penultimate and Tom I think will be trying to play the black ball. So we'll be trying to lengthen Black's shot while potentially giving Blue a shorter one. So one of the things you can do here is to hit Blue, croquet it level with red on the western side of the lawn, yeah. and rush Blue, sorry, rush Black a yard north corner four. And it means Blue can play, but it's a little bit more difficult of a <coughs> pick up for Blue than Black. Mm. Um, big croquet stroke and you're offering blue a 13 yarder you could even move black six yards north corner four seven yards north corner four lengthening blue shot yeah you just need to be length lengthening the shot don't you really what I don't want is Black to have a 13-yarder with a ball to its hoop. No. Because um, then he can manufacture stuff. Yeah. So Black has to have something that's at least 16 yards. Um, He's in good position with regards to yellow, blue and black that he has a choice to do whatever leave he wants with these balls, I think, can't he? Because he can rush blue where he wants to. And croquet it. Yeah. So it's just about getting that right option. The one negative feature is it isn't easy to get blue on a boundary. No. Although, when, now, when I say a boundary, obviously it's easy to get blue on the south boundary, but that's no good because Tom's got a lift. So he needs to be moving it onto a boundary that's a long way away from a bulk line. Is there any possibility of trying to get probably black hoop bounds anywhere? Or is that just not really even a thought because of... No, it's too far away from everything. And I wanted to put more focus on getting blue um, towards the boundary. And Rob's decided that the east boundary is the best place to go. And it's fine. If he goes level with hoop five on the east boundary, yeah. even a yard or two north of that, that's going to be a long shot for black. Yeah. So that meets my criteria. And if he puts black again on the maximum distance spot um, on the west boundary, black will have a 13 yarder at red, yeah. but it's rushing it away from its hoop. Yeah. So it, it's quite good doing that. He's going to maximize some distances and say, well, the shortest shot you've got, now this is quality. That has put blue in a magnificent place. How would you croquet that to almost the yard line from that far away? Especially on that brown patch. Yeah. It's just off it, isn't it? So black can again go to a maximum distance spot and say your shortest shot is at red, but if you hit that, you've got nothing. Yeah. Well, apart from the innings, which is crucial. It is important, <laughs> yeah. Rob didn't mean to hit black bear. He's no. shaking his head. He's now going to have to position it close to a boundary with a takeoff yep. going to the peg. To peg. Um, any thought he had of maybe moving it into corner two has gone. I think he was trying to rush it into the maximum distance spot. Yeah, and then just an easy takeoff, isn't it? Yeah. So this combination of pace of lawn, more difficult hoops, is really starting to cause problems for the players. Yeah, although the other game, I'm not too sure what's happening in the other game, 
looks like they've stopped, is it? They seem to have played very well this morning. Yeah, very high standard of play. Matthew's in play. And I would guess he's um, potentially on a triple peel. So Rob's got a good leave out of, out of it. And again, that was probably down to the rover ball going slightly too far to the west. So is this shorter shot? Or are you thinking about a longer shot with the potential of a break? That's a really good question. I think I'm playing black at blue and having a ball, I hope. Playing it from a bulk. Yeah. It's about 17 and a half yards from there, I would say. But if I hit it, I am going to go to the peg. Yeah. I am going to lay up in corner two, and Tom's going to be down by corner four. And I'm going to really threaten to finish next turn. I think if Tom hits blue with a black, he's odds on to win the game. You would think two two good breaks. Oh, he's shooting at red. In the middle. Oh, he said to ball it. That's an excellent shot. And wow. When you hit that in the middle, you normally think, oh, geez, why didn't I shoot yeah. the blue? Just, yeah. Because he's got nothing now. No. This is going to be a leave. And Tom is going... This is going to be one of the areas of the game that Tom isn't as good at Robert at. Yeah. Um, well, probably no one is, to be fair, Chris. To be fair to, be fair to Tom. To be fair to Tom, <laughs> that's exactly right. That's absolutely true. Tom has to guard Red's shot at the peg. Yeah. Now, he can do that in two ways. He can roll Red to corner four, going to blue, and roll blue towards corner two to try and lengthen the shot. Or he can take off from Red and roll blue probably, what do you think, it's about... 10 yards east of corner three, 10 yards west of corner three. Yeah. To try and guard the shot and say, okay, I can leave it for my penalt ball or my one back ball and get a break if you miss. Yeah. And one of the things we should explain to viewers is Robert, now having pegged out his own ball, doesn't get any more lift shots. No. So Tom can make one back. After that ball's made one back, he can make two back, three back. If he makes four back, Still no lifts, and that's a big advantage to Tom. So who's, uh, I mean, this is a coin flip, isn't it, at the moment? I'm favouring Robert. Um, Simply for the, the knowledge of the free ball ending? Yeah. yeah, Robert's going to get probably three, maybe four shots, and that's going to have him as a favourite. Um, if you were playing against Robert, you would get... A maximum of two shots. Yeah. And possibly not two. Because Robert would be looking for ways to finish with a three three ball double peel. Right. And Tom is not going to be looking at that, yeah. I don't think. So this next shot <coughs> quite tricky. You need to roll to the north boundary, not get too tight to it because you want to give yourself some room. Yeah. Not finish in a position where Rob gets a double target of the peg with a ball in the background. Yeah. And I'm certainly going to be walking up to the north boundary to have a look at where the good and bad places are. Yeah. You don't want to give a free shot through the peg. You don't want to finish with both your balls on the north boundary and no room to dig a ball out and Rob can just have a free shot. And you're rolling from sort of 18 yards, aren't you, or something? I'm amazed he hasn't had a look. Now he's changed his mind. This is going to corner two, and this is just leaving a free shot for Red at the peg. So my assumption with this line of play is he's approaching Penalt. It he certainly lined the balls up that way. And if he's approaching Penalt, anything can happen. You can leave a ball in the middle of the lawn. You can not get in front of the hoop and have to join up in the middle of the lawn. If he's trying to send blue to corner two, 
you can get in front of Penult and send the front ball off. Lots of bad things can happen on this line. I'm wondering if he's trying to send the uh, forward ball near the boundary behind six to kind of guard the shot. You think it's over there? So, yeah. Lou's a bit short. Bit like this. Black's a bit short. And Black now has to go near the north boundary to guard Red's shot. Um, Blue's on the line of hoop two and three. And it's, we're going to struggle, I think, to get a perfect angle for you here. Um, be nice to go and have a look behind Red. Um, but we've got a static camera, I think. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to move to behind that line of red and the peg and wherever black and blue finish. So that's leaving a guard for blue rather than black. And you do genuinely threaten to finish here because if red shoots, blue picks you up, sends red to two back, makes one back and three back off black. And after three back, black goes to penultimate potentially for a straight three ball double. Um, so Rob's going to have a think here. Rob's in no rush, no. is he? No. He doesn't have to go out for the win straight away. What's Rob's defensive shot from here? He's got an interesting going into corner one. I think Tom's going to regard that as a two-back pioneer if he goes into corner one. Yeah. But he hasn't got a great rush to one back. No. And going into corner one might force Tom towards corner three, which is behind the one-back ball's break. Um, is Rob trying to generate a short, shorter shot for himself or a mistake from Tom trying to... He's trying to generate a free shot for himself. Right. Or encourage Tom to do something too aggressive yeah so you know this red corner one and hope tom plays blue approaches one back and makes an error yeah or makes one back rolls it to three back going to court the ball in corner one and makes an error at two back yeah is is completely playable um if tom hits black rolls up to one back doesn't make it rob's generated the free shot we mentioned through the peg into corner three yeah um and he's shooting. I'm a little bit surprised by this. Don't know what he's got, but I'm assuming it's just the peg. So, he didn't call for an umpire there. And even the English players would normally call for an umpire to watch the peg if you're shooting at it from that far away. Yeah. So, he has shot at the peg, I'm pretty sure. And he's missed to a position where Blue can pick him up. Let's see what Tom makes of this. Tom's got, what, five and a half, six yarder? It's a six yarder at red. And he's going to turn around and pick him off. And I think Rob's taken it purely on the basis that this shot's missable. A lot of pressure on this shot. Centre yep, ball, centre ball. Uh, as per. <laughs> so now, this is about control and precision. And Tom asked me after the match, have you got any practice exercises I recommend? And I said, well, play a four ball break and try and peel your pioneer through each hoop. Yep. I said, yeah, you should be able to do it 12 out of 12, but start off and if you get seven, that's fine. That was a, out of the Wiley book, did he? Uh, can't remember where that's from. It's definitely a good one to do. And then I said, if you get good at that, do it on a three ball break and do the same. And now he's got the chance to effectively do that. Red goes to two back, rushes black to one back, sends it to three back, then sends it to penult, and does a straight double peel on a three ball break to win game one plus one. <laughs> Haven't we had some exciting games it's here? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's gone midday. Uh, they've been on two and a half hours now. Um, and remember, this is just normal advanced. There's no super advanced here. No, We've no. had some absolutely cracking games to watch.
absolutely no need is there for super advanced in these conditions. It's been uh, great croquet. He's got a little bit of work to do still to get this hoop. Lovely pace shot, isn't it? Very Those good. Approaches are Very good. So he has been getting forward rushes from these positions this game, Tom. That looks good. Mm. Yeah, just oh, a little foot, bit too far. Foot too far. Because red isn't ideal. There is a little slope around hoop one and two back on lawn three. Yeah, that's a lovely shot. Yeah, black probably one yard too far, but I wouldn't want it back. No, he's got it's the a rush. very good shot. So I'll be interested to see if Tom is thinking of finishing this turn or not in his head. It is. It's uh, that is the question. Has he actually even thought about it? Yeah. As you say, the polarity of the balls is good. Yeah, a little bit longer there than he might want. Nice hoop stroke. He runs it to the boundary. Or well, we hope to the boundary. No, no. Oh, just got that extra. It's the extra foot that you don't like. And I would say he doesn't want to hit this at his preferred pace. He has no. to hit this gently. Little tap. Because otherwise he doesn't have room to send it. Not into the hoop. Good, no, good. good. So this, this is the bread and butter croquet shot. These big sort of 90 degree splits that you can practice. Yeah. Um, which you get quite often, you know, on most of the uh, outside hoops. All the top players should be proficient at this shot. Uh, plays it with a little bit of a roll. Mm, blue's travelling. It's okay. Isn't yeah, it's it? pretty good. It's okay. Red's in the box. Yeah. It's very easy to hit red too hard then, and get in a bit of trouble at four back. Interestingly, one of these positions where if you rush black in front of Penalt, I wouldn't want to peel it. Yes. I want to Irish peel Penultimate. Going to the third ball? With a side ball. Yeah. At Penalt. The wind is just getting up as well. We can see the trees are really starting to move. Yeah, no sign of rain immediately, but actually uh, over those distant houses, probably several miles away, we are getting darker. Yeah, it, it feels ominous. So it's just caused Tom to back off there. Um, yeah, that top of that tree is going all over the place. Rob won't like that. But this is a three-error game already for Rob, isn't it? I would say that not finishing TP was an error. Oh, definitely. So is that definitely. four errors? Is it three or four? I can't remember. He's missed that hampered shot. Then he failed hoop. Was it? He failed hoop six. I can't remember. If it's it's either three or four, um, which is amazing. Missed a short rocade, didn't he? Missed a seven or eight yarder. Yeah. Um. So let, where's Black gone? Black is perfect. I and reckon. Blue's got a sideways rush. Yeah. Um, a couple of good shots to get make this hoop. Yeah, this sideways rush isn't bad. Yep, done nicely with it. Be able to pop that towards the boundary and run it firmly. Looks okay to me. It's 
funny with some of the camera angles it just looks a bit more angled but yeah easily through yeah very good nice positive hoop stroke so we'll see here Chris if he's uh, planning the double straight peel yeah yeah I, I have no idea I can offer you no more than that it's on it's on I don't think he will although he's taken some time looking so I think it's crossed his mind or is he is he starting to look at a wide position to put Robin after Rover do you think yeah I think that's what's happening so this is a non attempt at finishing and I don't think there's anything wrong with that no definitely because you can hide the peg from Rob he can't win from his next shot unless he hits a 30 yarder yeah. yeah and that's the standard play in this kind of ending anyway it just happens that yeah, Rob he's got the chance to do the double peel which is a one off yeah Rob would have been trying to have a go at the peel and being able to abort should he not get it <coughs> And he's played this well enough, Tom, to have only given Rob one long shot at the moment. Correct, correct. Um, good pick up that six yard of that first shot, wasn't it? Oh, very much so. So where would he be sending this Rover ball? As close to Rover as possible or mm. elsewhere? I, I think you want a genuine Rover pioneer here. Um, after the making penult, you can croquet um, black either towards hoop four or hoop one. Yeah. Whichever corner you've decided you're going to lay up in. So if you're laying up in corner two for penultimate, yeah. you can lay up um, the opponent in corner four. If you decide to lay up in corner three, you can go to corner one. Equally, I think we should mention that the easiest place to get red wired from the peg is directly behind Rover. Yeah. So he could lay up in the middle of the north boundary and accept it's maybe four or five yards shorter. Yeah. Rob's shot. But Red's definitely gonna be wired on the peg. Yeah. And I can definitely make a leave where one of my balls is wired as well. Yeah. So um, that could leave potentially a 30, 28 yard shot. Yeah. Um, needs to give himself room to dig a ball out this is pioneer this is oh no 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 no, no 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 it's off the lawn it's it? gone it's gone yeah. and uh, bob's got as many lives as a cat this is ridiculous yeah and it, it's all well and good sending black to hoop four or to hoop one as a, a helper ball yeah but there was never any possibility that you were going to threaten the border there was no need to and particularly I would have potentially chosen corner one because it's greener. Yeah, but I mean the colour around corner four is just brown. Yeah. That's that's uh, So we've mentioned That's unbelievable. Rob being quite lucky. And I think it's been a trait of his game for a long time. But I've seen this happen so many times. He had a he had a game against um, Chris Haslam. Chris Haslam was a six foot ten for future basketball pro at Bowden and Chris um, ran Rover with one ball, peg alone he had a two yard roquet he hit the two yard roquet into the middle of hoop five couldn't get to the peg and <laughs> lost by one and it's not often you take croquet for peg alone and you don't yeah. win but Rob's just taking off the peg and he's going to win game one plus five Tom hasn't put his clip on, he's that disgusted with that croquet stroke. He didn't even put his ball back on the lawn. No. I mean, I, Rob must be thanking his lucky stars. Wow. You? That is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. So over two and a half hours for the first game. Um, another seesaw battle. It, it's been fun. It's been it? really fun. Well, apart from, not for Tom, but he's played really well that game and literally that's the worst shot he's hit today when he had no need to I mean is that just 
pressure of thinking, oh, I'm going to beat Forford in the first game, really brought my first semi, or is that just a I think he, of concentration? He looked to put it too far in the first place. He yeah. was looking three yards south of the hoop. I'm looking level with the hoop. Yeah. I'm just taking any disasters out of play. Because um, to even get the rush on Black back to whatever corner he's going to, the nearer you put Black on the boundary, you, you're starting then to have to roll it. Off, yeah. Aren't you? yeah, if you don't get a rush out of Rover, you don't want to be rolling the ball away from miles away, getting a rush north to corner two. Um, That's incredible. So, we're starting game two straight away. Rob, this time, has won the toss, and he's saying, right, let's forget about that nightmare game one. Let's get a super shot out. Let's get me out back into a normal sort of bonky game aggressive play and this is an interesting super shot because this is much wider than some of the other players have played it and fairly short fairly short and Rob's saying if you're going to lag a ball out into the lawn I'm going to take a shot through that misses only to 11 yards out of b-bulk yeah I'm going to play it hard I'm not having any of these dribbly openings that other people have played um, so that's why he's played it that bit wider um, the downside is when people go to maximum distance spot and you miss, you give them the option of shooting at yellow, which is only about 10 and a half, 11 yards away. Yeah. Um, but it's a sort of an anti lag second ball. You know, if you play four yards east of yellow and a little bit north, um, as has been done in a few games yesterday, Rob's saying, um, I'm just hitting yellow and going round. Bob's taken quite a long shot, isn't he? Yeah, he will, he'll take this, and his normal play is to play it from inside the corner, so that if he misses, he's sort of joining up with it. If he misses on the left, it'll be a full join. If he misses on the right, it'll be about a nine, ten yard join. Yeah. I'm actually a bit stunned that Tom has started this game so quickly. If I was him, I'd have had a ten minute break, just get my head back together. You know, he's, he's almost won the first game. He's done a terrible error, and they've started within a minute. It's interesting. I think he's a fluent player who likes to play, and I would have started straight away as well. Right. Because I, I, I'd still be going, I think I outplayed Fulford in that first game. I think I was better than him. He, well, got, he, he got a bit was, lucky. Yeah. But I actually think I can have him. Mm. I want to go straight in and just prove I can get a quick ball round in this game and put him back under pressure again. Yeah. Anyway, Rob's shot coming up from probably a yard or two west of corner three because he likes this potential joining up shot. It's taken a long time to slide it up, hasn't he? It's a big shot. Uh, he's restalked it, he's walked away. We do have people generally walking around in the background and perhaps he's not entirely happy with <coughs> what's going on. So that's a miss, that. miss. Where did it go off? I think it might have gone off fairly close to blue. Yeah, it was a long... Could easily be seven or eight off. yards away from it. So that's about ten. Nine yards, ten yards. It's quite a... An interesting spot to miss too, isn't it? And I, I, I think the normal shot, which I would be expecting, is black at yellow at the 11 yarder. Yeah. Not guarding red at blue, just saying I'm going to hit this 11 yarder. Um, yeah, you want to take croquet again, don't you? Soon it, as. This double target that Tom might be lining up is much longer than the 11 yarder. This yeah. is a 19 yarder with a ball nine yards behind it. Yeah, it's, it looks like a double target, but in reality it's, it's he's, not, is it? He's hit the middle of the double. Yeah. That was the half ball on the right hand side of blue. It's a brilliant shot. Yeah. And the one thing, having taken what I think is a longer shot, is it's an easier break for him. Yeah. Especially with yellow being where it is. This will calm him down a bit, get his head clear, a couple of nice strokes, get a hoop. He still needs to play a good takeoff here to avoid having to play the big croquet stroke. Yeah. 
and we've you mentioned multiple times that area is brown isn't yeah. it and we saw a takeoff Rob played and he just touched it and it moved seven yards up the boundary and got a perfect rush so I think this is tricky and Tom I don't think he's even going to play it I would yeah I think he might just be nudging blue just in go inside do a little croak of okay now it's gone well inside yeah. And he's just going to say, no, nah, this croquet stroke's easier than yeah. messing with this dodgy boundary. I think that's uh, a good line of play. Hoop five in the way, or is that further south? It'll be in his periphery, I suppose. No, I'm, I'm going, oh, I think, two yards north of hoop five here. Short, isn't it? It's the ratio's a bit long. Yeah, red's gone north of the hoop, which we never like, putting it outside the rectangle. And and black actually is, is probably only about three feet short, but it, it hasn't got a rush directly at one here, and it will be wanting to half ball this. It's a good shot. Yeah, solid, isn't it? Geez, if you can hit shots like that, it really does build your confidence up. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, red is uh, imperfect. If you had normal hoops, you'd be confident of getting a, a rush on yellow over to blue. But I don't think with these hoops, you can quite be that uh, aggressive. Oh, he's dug yellow out a bit, actually, isn't he? Yeah. He's got a bit of room. A bit of room. Nice and straight in front of the hoop, a tad longer than you'd ideally want, is he going to risk this gentle hoop stroke? No, he's gone He's gone firmly. Um, and I don't know whether he's managed to hold. Yeah, I think he has just got a useful rush. It isn't to red and it isn't to blue, but simply having a rush is useful, isn't it? Yeah. It, you, you can now choose where you want to take croquet from. Exactly. I certainly wouldn't tap this. I definitely want to use it some way. Round of applause for Jenny beating Alison in the plate. So that was a plate quarter final. Put that in a slightly awkward position. It's gone sort of northeast of three. But that's a good line to take off back down to blue. Yeah. Again, it's these kind of thick takeoff shots that I think really help break building because you you actually making use of both balls rather than the little thin takeoff. Yeah, so he's on the fast patch. So he's got is a, it fast enough? I think it is, yeah. it's beauty. He's got a nice pine at three, he's got a rush over to oh, the side can, of the course. You can cut that within a few yards of red with a good shot, can't you? Yeah. This is now a break. And a very good response from the dejection of game one. It's overcut it, yeah. but it'd still be okay yeah. there. He's played well. I mean, he played well last game. It's just a one bad shot. It's done him in. It's so. I think the thing that we're going through in my mind is having taken the the more cautious, very sensible line of not going for a straight double peel. You've almost got in your head. Well, I'm definitely on the peg now. Yeah. And he hasn't managed to put a clip on the peg. Yeah. Yeah, Bob was out of his seat straight away. Very excited. <coughs> Can you see any action on lawn two? I've seen Matthew in play a bit. Again, reminding viewers that Andrew Gregory is doing his normal excellent text commentary on croquet scores, so you can keep track of the other game um, while you're watching this at the same time. Um, but yeah, Matthew had quite a lot of play. Um, I can see a ball by hoop five and Matthew still in play, so nice. I would expect this is towards the end of a triple peel to take a 2 0 lead. And Tom's very well in control now. 
So would this just be a straight ball round? Straight ball to four back. And what's his favourite lead? I think he's a, he just prefers spread. a spread. And there's no real need not to if opponents on one and one. Yep. So if that's your preferred third leave, fine. I've seen so much of Tom over the last hour. Yeah. I'm struggling to believe he's one down. I know. It's, uh, it's criminal. That's an interesting place he's put red. Um, that's his pivot at the moment. And he's put it, instead of at the peg, he's put it south of hoop three. And it just means that if you run hoop three by eight or nine yards, you've got a ball you can hit. You don't have to hit a ball at the peg. You've probably got a three yard back at red. So I quite like moving these pivots around during the turn. It's a bit of a come down from the last half hour where we've had the excitement of the two failed TP attempts, yeah. a free ball game, and now we're just back in the, the normal old boring break. The routine, and these games get interesting when someone hits a lift, and we have these discussions about is it a TPO, is it a sextuple leave followed by a TPO, or is it all out sextuple? Um, Again, it's another short four pioneer. So we've still got other small tournaments going on, haven't we, Chris? I suppose that we should actually update the viewers because <coughs> our live commentary watchers are actually doing the whole job for us and they're saying Essex 2-0 up already. Oh, perfect. And on a break in the third turn of game three. Oh, excellent. Uh, I did have Matt as my favourite today going into this, but you never know what Robbie's going to find, do you? Yeah, I mean, Essex played so well yesterday and shot so well. He's just, he's on form. Um, and he, he had a quick win yesterday, whereas... Robbie Fletcher was here for hours scraping away against Jose. You don't know what that took out of him. It's a long match. I think they finished the third game about six o'clock. Yeah. Um, so Tom just going to get a rush on red to the east boundary and load hoop five with red going to this slightly imperfect blue. But he's under good control. Yeah, he's a good position. Would you say this is a bit too tight? Has he got this good a stop shot? Yeah, when he's coming over across the rush line, it's um, nothing should go wrong, but stuff tends to go wrong. Yeah, so he's quite rightly decided to just leave red a fraction short and hold for his rush. Yeah. And it's all fine. Again, it's still not ideal. Yeah, it's still a two yard croquet shot. You, When you've got all four balls, I like to make a tight break and I almost get. Yeah. The same satisfaction out of doing a, a tight break and a good leave as I do a triple peel. Yeah. Um, there's something to be said to have good control. And often when we're commentating at Hurlingham and we're picking up on these minor little flaws, no one ever finds out why we're saying it because the lawns are a little bit slower, yeah. and the hoops are a lot easier, and they, they just finish anyway. But this tournament's been great because we've been able to pick out little, little errors and then they've built, haven't they? Yep, 10% every shot. Eventually it's caused a full blown out mistake. Yeah. Um, so really do focus on getting good tight breaks when you're playing. Um, I played at Surbiton in the week and those lawns aren't 
flat and they, they haven't fully recovered from last year's heat wave. So it's very uneven, yep. brown patches and then some grass. And these small, you know, just being a yard further away from the hoop than you sh want to be, it just makes that shot. 10% harder and then next shot 10% harder um, so they're only minor flaws on these lawns because they're so good but ideally you just want to keep it tight so again you know hasn't quite got the rush he wanted and now he's just got to play a bigger croquet stroke moving his black ball further than he wanted to yeah and this time we probably won't see him put out an early two back pan here no because partner isn't one of the balls at five. Yeah. The partner will go to two back after hoop six. And now this, this wind is getting up, isn't it? It is. And now he's got a two and a half yard rush. Yeah. Yeah, this is... It's just a bit loose. It is, exactly. He's overhit it. And now he's approaching from four feet away. From the side. And it's only minor stuff, but after the first game we saw with he just wants to get round get round safely and as the, as the wind picks up you start to trust your swing a little bit less yeah but if you can get round and put the pressure on Rob try and get back in the match so he's run a good hoop and he's back in good position and his hoop strokes looks, looks look better oh it's yeah it's lovely um certainly a lot better than Rob's at the moment. He's, he's not afraid of these hoops like Rob is at the moment, it yeah. seems. Yeah. And again, lots of good approaches. There's been a couple I think he's overhit, but he's hit them down a really good line. Yeah. And he's ended up with a six-inch hoop, which I don't think he was going for. Matthew just run two back on his third turn break in the third. He's obviously trying to finish before lunch. Uh, it is a delight to watch. Um, is that rain? It is. It started to rain. Definitely rain. And it's, it's definitely got cold as well. I think I'll pop my sweater on. Brown has just failed a two foot straight hoop from the balls finished up behind him. Exactly that. On lawn four. That was the point I was going to make. He's he's tried to run four back from a couple of feet straight. Yep. And where's Black finished? Five feet yep. south it's, of the uh, hoop? These hoops are excellent. Chatting to Mark Avery yesterday after he lost to Essex. And it's just the hoops are just a bit tighter and angled just a little bit harder I mean it's made a world of difference it's all about the square carrot Gavin they um I haven't run one of these hoops but uh, you can just hear the ball even when a clean hoop stroke goes through you can, you can just feel the uh, the click as it goes through they're very solid so are these carrots on these they're just square they're the same length are they their normal length, as a uh, you know, uh, old Jake's would be, so they're less long than a ultra. Yeah. But they're square, all the way down, tapering. Yeah. To a to a point, and when Ray Atkins originally designed them, he rang me up. He said, "Can you come and have a look at this? I've designed a new hoop." And he did this wonderful, clever engineering at the top where. You can set them to four different widths and have them the same width all the way down. Right, yep. Very clever engineering. Far above me. But his carrot that he designed was rectangular. Yeah. And I said to him, I don't think that's going to work. I think more of the pressure is going to go on that, that axis, sort of the forward, long axis. And, back, yep. and eventually they're going to become loose. Yep. Why don't you try a square carrot? And we tried a couple of prototypes and the square carrot was clearly better yeah and that's what's the number one feature of Atkins in my mind and you get this lovely square dibber that helps make the hoop holes I was going to ask whether they just got banged in no no you've got this big piece of metal yeah that you can bang into the lawn with square holes and 
It just makes the hoops go straight in at the right, you know. So they're set at the right yeah. measurement yeah, as well. You can put a clamp on them as yeah. well, but... Um, <coughs> and the, <coughs> the additional benefit of having this dibber, as we call it, is you don't have to hammer the actual hoops as much because right. two thirds of the job is done for you. Yeah. So when you bang the top of the hoop, the crossbar in the middle eventually over years starts to bend a bit. Yeah. And as it bends, the hoop loses its exact size of the wires. The wires tend to splay outwards. Yeah. And so you end up having to replace the crossbar. And one of the great things about these is even after seven or eight years, if you need to replace the crossbar, it's one piece of metal. Yeah. So you can just unscrew it, get a little new crossbar, yeah. and you back up with a brand new hoop virtually. And that saves expense for the clubs as well, doesn't it? Yeah. And again, no painting, no yeah. sandblasting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, at the end of a tournament, instead of having to go and dig up all your hoop holes and move all the hoops to three and three quarters for your club players, one minute per hoop, you swing the wires around and they're three and three quarters yeah. again. Very clever. So Tom's made uh, two back. Looks like a diagonal spread. And Matthew has sort of done what I'm going to call a Robbie leave. On his third turn break, if we're right it's third turn, I'm not sure, it's, I think we might have been given some duff information. Yeah, that's... that's not a third turn break, no, okay. So Matthew is around but it was with all four balls on the lawn and Robbie is now lifting the ball at hoop two and taking the short lift against an NSL and it is raining yeah I've just got to get my bag from this outside no problem now to me I think Robbie might not be on the end of a bulk so i think he might have moved a little bit further back to get a target so while tom's making his diagonal spread and he hasn't got a perfect rush to three back so he's going to be approaching three back from not the ideal place in the background we've got robbie fletcher preparing to take his lift shot so tom's approached with a much more difficult square splitty shot than he should have had to play, but he's played it well. And run the hoop well again, but hasn't got a rush. Red's a pretty good ball at the peg, so still shouldn't be any problem, but he had to do a lot more work at three back there than we were expecting. And Robbie now stalking and restalking. Well, this is. Uh potential last shot isn't it for Robbie? It is. I was saying it looked to me as if he might have gone a little bit back from the end of Abel. Yeah, Maybe he's like got it. a target. And he's shot and he's missed. And this is a golden chance to win 3-0 against the world number one. What? Where's... Uh... Essex ranks in the world. I think he's about number four now. Um, Tom's hit a lovely rush on red there. Looks, looks good, doesn't looks, it? Yeah, looks wide already. Yeah. Blue in a good position just to be able to take off and rush to the boundary. Yeah, red looks perfect. And again, I think he'll make quite a horizontal spread. Yeah. Try and make it sort of 19 yards from each boundary, maybe 20 yards from B bulk, 18 from A bulk. Rob's already hit one shot from both bulk lines. Yeah, he took the uh, from B boundary last time, wasn't it? On the oh, lift shot, yeah. and from A fourth turn. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll again lift the yellow and take the shot from third corner, down the boundary, at the blue. This rain is pretty hard now. Matthew's just wandering up to the clubhouse, so I'm wondering whether he's decided to take a lunch break. Would you take a lunch break when you've got a match-winning turn? 
No. The only reason I think I might do would be because it, of the conditions it's raining, but in 45 minutes, if it's raining for that length of time, the lawn, lawns will be totally different speed. So I'd probably want to continue, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of playing. Um, just certainly go out and keep your rhythm. Um, so Paddy's asked, has Robert Fletcher ever lost 3-0 before? And I can't remember it, so I think I'm going to go with no. Um, and um, we've been asked, it doesn't appear to be much of a crowd, are they all hiding inside? And I think there will be more people here today, but there'll be people having lunch and people in the tents all around the grounds that you can't see. <coughs> we've probably got seven or eight tents around here. Um, the big one you can probably fit 30 people into, otherwise about eight or nine people can fit in a tent. And they'll be leaving the odd tent available for players as well. Um, equally, you can go up to the clubhouse into the orangery. And that's a lovely place to watch from. Um, comfy chairs, food, drink, and it's a little bit warmer as well. That's where I disappeared to yesterday when I got cold after my five-hour commentary spell. Um, it's actually pretty cold now. Can you see Rob from your angle, Chris? I can't see Rob. Oh, he's just putting the ball on, um, actually. So, yeah, he's now put it in corner three. And the reason he's lifted yellow is if he hits blue to corner four, it's easier to get a rush on red to hoot one than yellow to hoot one eventually. Yeah. Uh, equally, if he would play a really bad shot and go off next to blue, you can't just rush black to hoot one and get the player to the balls right. So I'm not expecting him to play a bad shot and go off next to them. But he could hit it in the middle like he did in the first game. Yeah. And we've been saying these shots about one in three. But he's hit a lot of shots in the last two days. Have you ever seen Rob wear waterproofs? Yeah. It's, I think it's one of those things where as you get older, you need to do more to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, and yeah, normally it hasn't been as gentle rain as this, but yeah, he's always had the opportunity to put waterproofs on. And I, I just carry on playing. Here we go, yellow's gone. And it's hit blue on the right-hand side. Yeah. And now we're into this fantastic phase of the game. Are we going to see a direct TPO? Or a one back leave, or a ball to four back with two pops. They're the three options, aren't they? Do you think? I think so. Um, would him failing his TP have any justification about doing a TPO? I still think he'll think these lawns are easy. Um, they're going to get easier, aren't they? They are They're now, slowing yeah. down. The rain is slowing them down. And if he can play a turn here for 25 minutes, doing a TPO, yeah. when Tom comes onto the lawn, they might be a full second slower, and Tom might make a speed error yeah. on his contact turn by under-hitting. Or he might go, well, I think they're a lot slower because of all this rain, and actually they've only oh, got yeah. one second slower instead yeah. of two. And would Rob have any preference over a one back leave, then the TPO, or straight to a TPO? He'll do a straight TPO. Straight TPO. And he'll keep three balls on the lawn. And do you think these hoops have now taken out possibilities of sex duples? No, I don't. No? No, I don't. I just think you've got to play well. Yeah. Um. There have been, been plenty of sex duples with Atkins. Mm. Um. So Isaac, I think, just took a comfort break because he's back on the lawn 
Russia to hit one. Indeed. And he's overhit it, I think. It's, it's going nice towards corner one. Yeah. Um, he's got partner at, more or less at the peg and the ball at hoop two. So this really is a roll to hoop one for the world. Yeah. But he's closer to corner one than, than hoop one. Rob, meanwhile, has got a longer hoop one than he would like. He had to take off with a backward takeoff from red. But he's finished straight in front. And Essex. Nicely through from Rob. Essex did his roll and a uh, successful hoop run before Rob had run that hoop. That's just how fluent and fast he is. And he's run it up to hoop two, hasn't yeah. he? Yep. So again, it's, uh, Rob had the angle there to literally fall ball straight down to blue, but hit it at a very soft pace. Yeah. Which then went into the hoop. Yeah, so that's definitely changed in the last 10, 15 years, that strength of Roque. Yeah, so he's basically said his wrists are so bad he doesn't think he'll ever play a you know, proper golf pro tape tournament right. again. Oh, really? Um, but it is lovely to see that his uh, AC ability still <laughs> remains and he's still one of the top players yeah. in these world championships. So when Rob played GC, did he not do much jumping? He was always trying to avoid it. And certainly if you were to put him in the top 100 golf croquet players, he would might be in the bottom 20 of those 100 at golf uh, jump shots, and particularly that, from distance. So was that a technical issue or a wrist issue? It's, it's a combination of the two. So if you imagine um, Stephen Molina, who's mm. an Irish grip player, mm. Stephen plays his jump shot Solomon. Oh, really? So the Irish grip creates a very low, flat swing, which is wonderful for playing virtually every shot. You hit the ball purely, mm. and you've got a very big sweet spot, a very flat swing. But when you're playing a jump shot, you want to actually just hit down on the ball, get, get right. it hitting into the ground and bouncing up. And that Irish grip is a big weakness for that shot. Oh, that's really good to know, because... I can't do a jump shot and I just thought I was really bad technically but because uh, obviously I'm an Irish grip so it never crossed my mind about that hitting down. And again the Irish uh, grip players in Egypt which is 99% yeah. of them they're not great at jump shots. Right. Um, they're getting better. Yeah. They're better than they were 10 years ago but again that technique just isn't ideal. These are Callum's wet weather gear trousers. I thought they was clown gear. That is mental. Uh, flame coloured. <laughs> They're red, yellow and black. And you're not allowed to wear anything below the waist that isn't white at hurling up, <laughs> unless it's wet weather gear. Wow. Meanwhile, Rob has got his, has. He's got big his golfing gear, gear on yeah. here. He's got a red and black waterproof top on. And he'll be pretty easy to identify from now on. So the rules change when it's wet. And this is Rob swapping blue and black over. So he's going to want to peel black. If he wasn't TPOing, he wouldn't have put blue there. This is a clear indication of a TPO. Yeah. And he's, he's rushed black not into an ideal spot. So he's going to have to croquet a little bit south. Run the hoop gently, rush blue to corner two. Load hoop four, getting a rush on black, over to hoop three. And he'll probably try and rush it south of red. Yeah. Yeah. It's a clear indication that the TPO is the number one line of play here. And he's, he's managed to croquet black into a foot hampering position on his hoop stroke, which is why it's called the ref. And one of these interesting positions with the new law, if you feathered yellow when you were just sort of practice swinging, would it be your stroke? 
or not? Would you still be allowed to try and run the hoop if you are allowed to carry on the line of play? Yeah, I'm a bit hazy about it. There's one, this is, yeah, I don't know. This is a grey area, I think. Is yellow critical? Some people say because Jeff Dawson's come out and the, the black was potentially behind him, it was, but I still think it's quite a grey issue. Yeah. It's really horrible conditions now to play in. And unfortunately, the lawns will probably be made a little bit easier. It is a shame. This uh, this patch up by Hoop 2, I've been having all fun mm. watching these plate players getting up to corner two and they're, they're whizzing all over the place. I mean, every day it's growing close to the hoop. It is. It's, um, it's quite a big patch. Um, so that would have been fantastic. So Rob sends Blue down to hoop four and gets this rush to south of red, hopefully. So he can croquet black into peeling position, getting a rush on red to hoop three. Lovely shot. Yeah. Those trousers are remarkable. So I've seen a lot of Callum in yeah, Melbourne. Yeah, I've never seen, and seen he's those got before. Some, um, he's got some light blue ones that look a bit like pyjamas. <laughs> uh, a big character. Plays with a four pound mallet, Gavin. Oh really? It looks like an old wooden thing, doesn't it? It's, it, it's just a brick on a stick. So he isn't the person you'd choose to do your stop shot for you. But if you want someone to do a roll, yeah quite good. It's a very short mallet. It is. They're like 32 inches or something. Not as short as Ian Burridge's but yeah very short. They're going back to Rob. Black's been croqueted behind the hoop. Looks like it might be a tiny bit on the eastern side. Can he run the hoop past it and clip it back in front? This will test his hoop running now, isn't it? Yeah, he still hit it hard, doesn't he? He did. This is a tough one to dribble off. Particularly if you want to hit it half ball on the right. Well, it looks like it wasn't yeah. as bad as I thought and actually it's fairly straight. I, I think there's been so much water come down the last 20 minutes. You Makes can it easier. dribble, yeah. It's not going to deviate too much. So again, on a TPO, you'd like to peel this properly rather than simply jaws it. Needs a rush on red because blue is short, isn't it? It's short and west. Yeah, that's good. It's got the rush. So it's a good start to this turn after a nice hit in. Back to the Rob we know. And I'm looking forward to an old fashioned TPO game. Yeah, it'd be good. 2v1. Lawn speed changing every 10 minutes. The best ever tactician in the world playing the two balls. And someone who's shooting really well yep. playing against him. I don't know how many three ball endings Tom would have been involved in. So he hasn't been playing that long, has no, he? No, I'll go and have a look at TPO games for Tom. Um, so, 
let's have a look. TPO Games, he's done two himself. And XTPO's three. So three in total, I think. Three TPO Games. Um, two himself. One by an opponent. It's not very many, is it? No. I think we should probably also say he's only played 260 tournament games. Yeah. And if we compare that to uh, Robert Fulford, uh, Matthew Essick looks like he's number seven. Someone asked that question. Oh, no, that's an all-time one, so that had me on. Uh, but Robert Fulford, Career Games, is nowhere near 261. It's 2000. Eight, no, it's 3,453. Yeah. So almost 3,500,261. That's the level of experience difference. Um, so again, if I move it back to a five-game minimum, take me out of play. Matthew Essick, world number six. So you probably go above... There we turn to, oh no, he's a bit away. Oh no, Essex's going to go above Birch and Bamford here. Today? Yeah, he's going to get to world number four. Um, assuming, assuming yeah. this turn finishes. Yeah. So Rob's rushed back after hoop four again and has again not been able to hit it hard enough. So blue isn't a hoop six pound here. And well, Rob again ran the hoop by four yards so couldn't get the tight rush um, when blue is perfectly by the hoop looks to me like Matthews peeled penultimate after hoop six and is in full control So this long takeoff that we don't like, we particularly want to avoid it when the lawn's changing pace, and he's left it three and a half yards yeah, short. Yeah, and red's literally in front of the hoop. Yeah, that's yeah. not too bad actually from the side there, but not quite. But again, hitting this in the middle might have moved it two and a half yards before. Now it might only move it a yard, yeah. a yard and a half, and he's flicked it. So it's not a confidence builder. <coughs> when you no. flick that, he'll have been aiming at the middle of it. So I'll be interested to see if he can get forward rush here as well. Yeah, certainly Normally handy. Normally would. Felix is asking, will Rob consider having two off? And the first answer is Rob always considers everything. And he'll have considered it, and he won't be doing it. He'll be worried about being out hit by Tom. Tom won a two ball ending against Stephen Mulliner when Tom was on two and Stephen was in front of one. So Stephen immediately got a an advantage against him um, and he'll be having an old-fashioned three ball ending with two balls on for him and one for Tom the only question I want to potentially consider is will he peel blue through hoop one what are your thoughts on that I like that play um, a lot and as long as you're in control, either done the three peels or got the rover peel dead in front of rover, so you can almost do the peel going to rover if needs be. I think it just makes the um just gets you off that pirate suit, doesn't it? So you've mentioned one reason, which is it, it gets um, you but, but, off the opponent's hoop. I'm thinking about simply stopping Tom. The getting a squeeze, squeeze off the contact yeah. um, 
or potentially simply if there's a ball in corner two approaching hoop one send the ball to hoop two run hoop one off the north boundary hit the ball in corner two um, it's just a little bit more difficult to finish off the contact and you have no squeeze opportunities available so I think that will be in Rob's mind he's now approaching six getting the peely into position he's put blue nice and south so he can almost drive black down to Rover. It's almost a half roll with blue there isn't it? Yeah it's a long way south. He's run it into black moving it double the distance away from the hoop and Matthew trying to peel Rover going to three back so this is really very close to a match finishing position. And really no great surprise to me. I thought Matthew was clearly stronger yesterday. Um, bounced off to... No, it's in, in Jaws. It looked like it bounced off. So yeah. Rob's... Yellow is short though. Yeah, needs a cut rush here. He's got the angle. He can easily rush it into corner two. It's not that far actually, is it? He doesn't have to hit it really hard. No. Just get the line right. Still, that's only just going to reach the corner, isn't yeah. it? Um, but it's a good shot. After one back, he'll rush red back close to the end of B-bolt and send it all the way to three back. Rush peel black down the lawn, hopefully in front of Rover. So you're walking off the lawn again, so I'm assuming this is to dry the mallet grip this time. Yeah, I mean, it's brightened up a bit, but the rain's got harder. It's, uh, it looks like it might have set in for a few hours. But yeah, just even looking at uh, James Hopgood's approach there to fall back. It just looked trivial. Whereas a couple of hours ago it would have just carried on another two two foot. So Rob continuing, taking croquet from near corner two, sending out a two back pioneer. And he'll want this to be on the eastern side of two back, won't he? Yes. Yeah, I mean, if he can get a good rush in front of Rover with a good Pioneer at two back, he can get that last peel done. That's a bit short. It is. Lawn's slowing up. It is nicely on the eastern side, so you could potentially peel Rover going to it. You're more likely to on the TPO, aren't you, I'd imagine? Yeah, particularly if you're interested in this peel through hoop one on the other opponent ball to help prevent the squeeze. But a rush north now, close to the end of B-bolt, maybe needn't go all the way there. But you want to be approaching down the line of five and six, so you're, you're going straight at black. Probably rush three quarters of the way to the north boundary, I would have thought. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's actually gone all the way there. So this will be a drive now, rather than a stop shot. Does the change in lawn speed change your ratios? Yeah, you're going to get much less of a high ratio stop shot um, once they're slowing down. Uh, so lots of things to adjust for. Mm. The main thing for me is, I just hope it's in the rain, Gavin. <laughs> it's just so bad. Um, Is that why you moved to New Zealand? Well, no, not really. But, um, we're having some lovely summers um, in England, and I haven't watched much croquet over the last two years in the rain in yeah. the UK. This is quite a rarity. It has the uh, whether it's climate change or whether 
that's just psychosomatic but we've had some really warm wet uh, summers the last few years it's been great so wants to send out a genuine three back pioneer so he can peel black going to three back if he doesn't get a position to do it going to two back I mentioned that would be a drive. He's actually played a little bit more of a half roll, hasn't yeah. he? He's hit down on that. Red is very short. It's still peelable too. It's a good rush peel. So it's actually gone quite a long way east, isn't it? It has. So. Would you attempt to peel here, or would you just get it in position and do it on the way to three back? Well, part of my problem is getting it into position with a big pass roll isn't easy. Yeah. So I might actually line it up to try and hit the hoop. Yeah. A sort of you know half-hearted go, and that's Matthew three nil. Many congratulations. I think um, three and a half hours three nil. That's how to play the game, isn't it? Very impressive. Can he win the AC title to add to his current GC world title? Has that been done before? Well, we were looking yesterday and we thought Reg had held both at the same time. Around about 2013, 2012, that sort of time. Um, we couldn't quite work it out depending on exactly when things were played, but we yeah. think Reg had them both. It's quite an achievement. So he hasn't managed to get black really where he wants it. No, it's a bit wayward. And he, he's in a position now where it's not easy to get a rush on blue south to give himself enough room to send it to four back and hold for the rush on black. So I think he might try and play blue behind the hoop and get hoop and roke. Could he play it west and do more of a splitty shot? He could. That's definitely an option. He's looking about leaving it where it is and has he got enough room from almost where he's standing. I would have thought hoop and roque would allow him to hit the hoop shot harder, yeah. which he's been wanting to do, and get the extra room. So Marcus thinks the pop, that's peeling the hoop one ball to hoop two, the blue ball to hoop two is compulsory at this level. And um, I don't. I'm going to go old fashioned on this one. And particularly because of the rain. Has Rob just played a fault? He's or has he not approached the hoop? He's put his clips on. So either yellow won't run, which I think is the option because he's still on the lawn, or he played a fault. So um, just a gentle hoop approach and he hasn't hit it far enough by the look of it. And he's running away. Um, yeah. yeah, it's level with the hoop, isn't it? What could have caused that? That, that can't be the, the sogginess. No, Is that you... just a lack of concentration, not rushing blue to the right place? Oh, he spent a lot of time thinking about the shot, didn't he? Maybe he just put a bit too much into blue. Um... So, more interestingly, where's he going to go? Tom's going to want to play the blue, because the blue's the hoot one ball. And blue hasn't got an easy roque. It can hit black, but it's not guaranteed to go around from there. I would have thought corner two looked like the place to go here. The hoop is limiting Rob's options. Yeah, he can't slightly. scatter black, can no. he? Yellow at black is not an option, I don't think. But he can get to corner two, I think. You could potentially try and just 
go off the east boundary and guard blue at black, but it is only seven yards. Yeah, and I don't even know where we could go on the east boundary from there because it looks, it just looks an awful position. He certainly can't get to corner four, and I, I don't think he can get to, possibly get to near north of Peg High, maybe. I've never seen Rob play so many really poor shots in a game and a half before. No, I mean, I thought he was picking it up. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, one thing to be mentioned is the hoops are easy, even with the Atkins, and you have to make sure you get a go at them. Yeah. So it's guarded the shot. Um, I don't think that's enough to guard the shot. I think blue will hit red, and yellow will be a lovely ball to approach red onto. Blue from bulk. No, blue, blue, where blue, they lie. blue at red from where it lies. Blue at sorry, blue at black. Blue at black, yes, that's from where it lies. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, if you want more straight array, you can lift blue and shoot at red from bulk. Yeah. And that gives you a lot more. I don't think he needs it. He can just hit this. It's yeah. shorter. And he might even treat this as a rush to yellow. Lovely smooth shot there. Wow, I mean... Big round of applause from Ben Rothman. Got one American through. What they would give for the second American to go through as well. They would be in paradise, oh. wouldn't they? An all-American final. Um, A long way to go, but... Tom has looked the better player so far. I'd have to agree, yeah. Um, This is an interesting position because you don't have to worry about peeling. All you've got to do is one peel. All you've got to do is maximise your chance of picking up a break. Yeah. And I was trying to work out how the best way was. And I, I, was, I was thinking, can you croquet blue over between one and two and rush red back to yellow? Can yeah. you croquet black north getting a rush on yellow back south so you're approaching red on a, on a good rush line? Yeah. And he's done neither of those. So he hasn't got a hoop two pioneer and he hasn't approached red on a good rush line. So already I'm saying it's a little bit suboptimal. Yeah. Um, great hitting, don't get me wrong. I'll always take the hitting. But this is a long rush to hoop one. And I think the, uh, the lawn speed has played a big part in that shot because he hasn't hit a croquet shot in this uh, conditions, has he? since it's really started coming down with rain. Oh, I think he's hit that really well. That's a super shot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He'll be thrilled to well, that's, that. Well, that's a confidence builder again, isn't it? He'll, he's flowing with confidence now. He's still, he's got a job to do still to make hoop two. I'm sitting here thinking Tom's about to go two and a lot. So I know. I still can't believe he didn't win that first game. So this is to equalize. He still hasn't got a hoop two pioneer. So he's still got a bit of work to do, but all he's got to do is pick up the break and then do one peel on partner. All he's got to do, Chris. He's slightly overhit that, but it's fine. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, and he's got control. Yeah, he's controlling the hoop running stroke a lot better in this match. So you can rush red to the east boundary, croak it to three, get a rush on black to yellow, and everything should be under control. Yeah, rush that to ideal position. Great place to load hoop three and rush black to yellow. And once he's played one reasonable rush to hoop two, he's got everything. Yeah. So once uh, once he's under control at hoop two and three, you then start to think about getting the peel done. Well, actually, I'm one of the few players that doesn't peel 
we're over after hoop five. Right. And my view is if you do that, you take the ball out of play yeah. and you end up playing a three ball break round six and one back. Yeah. It's potentially, particularly if you draws it. Right, yep. Yeah. And I don't want to play a three ball break round six and one back. That's the difficult part of the three ball break. Yeah. So I just leave it and I try and peel Rover going to two back. Yeah. If I don't, I peel it going three back. And so it's, it's basically still... a standard TP without the first two peels. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Um, yeah, because so, I think most people will try and get it done as soon as. It just takes the ball out of play, particularly yeah. when it's jaws. Yeah. So that's not ideal rush. So it's coming backwards. So it's a decent line is coming down on. So people asking how many turns did Matthew Essex have in that match I and mean, it wasn't many but um, I remember Robbie Fletcher I think beat Jenny in 16 turns on lawn four at Roehampton when he won the world championship and um, 26 TP 17 TP 26 TP he did he miss a lift shot he didn't certainly didn't make an error I don't think it was a Remarkable one of games he had in that time. Yeah, he yeah. won every game, every single game. Yeah, and perhaps yesterday, that one game lost to Jose, which was his first of the championship, mm. maybe just started to put those question marks in. It was a very strange day, really, for those two. Um, very out of character. Yeah. Be interested to see whether he changes Mallet again. Yeah, I know when I played him the day before, he could only use one end of the Mallet face because the other one wasn't quite stuck properly because it's not his actual Mallet. Um, he seems very happy with the attributes of it. Um, it may just be one of those days. Did he play with that mallet in the Mac? No, I don't know. He didn't. So it's still, still quite getting new. used to it. Because in the GC Opens, he played with was it one of Reg's mallets. He did, and um, was unbelievably good. Uh, it's the best display of gold croquet I've seen. Very impressive. Mm. Okay, Christian's mentioned uh, an option I haven't talked about. You could peel Rover going to hoop four. Yep. And that's less risky. Yep. Um, it does tend to mean you need to rush out of hoop three. Yeah. And I'm going to try and play this break needing as few rushes out of hoops as I, I can get away with. Um, and certainly he's moved black a long way away from Rover now. So I don't think there's any need to peel before four or after five. There's no rush, is there? No. But you certainly don't want to leave it straight. No, definitely not, no. I mean, these lawns have totally changed speed. Um, it's a real shame, but it's heavy rain. Now, nothing the groundsman can do about no. this. They've done a fantastic job and we're just going to have to accept we're in a different playing condition. Do these lawns flood at all? Very, very rarely. It would have to be torrential and for some time. Um, they drain well. Um, but no, they, they can start puddling. Mm. And obviously when, when you dry a lawn out, it does tend to flood a little bit faster than when you're keeping it at 10 seconds yeah. and soft. Um, you're getting some more firm patches here. So you don't really want to start playing rolls in these conditions. No. They just get a bit heavier, don't they? Yeah, the back ball can suddenly just squidge a wee bit and not go as far. I am expecting to see Tom peel after five, because that's what most people I, I do. I think most people do, to be honest, Chris, yeah. 
Again, the, uh, the four pioneer is bad. He's certainly sending black over there. Last tight rush on yellow. Okay, so that's telling us that uh, Robbie played with um, one of his own design um, when he won the GC Open. But um, so it's not the same mallet, is it? It's no, just, it, uh, this one's a circular design. Yeah. Because he used to use one of the cylindrical Pidcocks years ago, so he likes the cylinder. So Tom's got partner out to heap five, ready for the peel. Gonna have to rush that a little way to get hoop four out of play and load six from further away than ideal. <coughs> I think one of the main things on a break like this is trying to keep concentration because it's literally a four wall break for the win. It is, yep. And it's very easy just to hit a couple of wayward shots. I'm trying to give myself more targets during the break. So yeah. instead of saying yellow to six, blue to red, I'm going to say I want a one foot rush on red to black. Yeah. Just to try and give myself something more to focus on. Yeah. Looks like Red Sea escape wall. He's going to try and get this black behind hoop five in front of Rover approaching the hoop. So I'm not going to ask for a percentage, Chris, because well, it you, keeps you ending just, up to zero, doesn't it? You just put zero <laughs> on everything and assume there's going to be an error somewhere. <laughs> and that's the ring the right hand side, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So he's run that into black, it and has. it's gone a long way. I'm definitely not peeling this. I'll take off from this and get a rush on red north. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect position to leave it there for the 4-2 back, isn't it, now? Yeah, I just don't like jaws in this. I just, I'm sure I saw Tom get on the ground yesterday to line up pills. Well I don't blame him for not doing that today. Now is that just that weather? I mean that's, that's true. That's through nicely. We lined that up well then didn't we? And that means you go back after hoop six. Pick it up. Put yellow to two back, rush black back to one back. Yeah. And you should be all good. So it's 95% now isn't it? Must be. Well, I, I would say this is over 99. <laughs> over 99? Over 99 from here. I don't know if you could ever go that high, why, Chris, can you? Why would you put red that side of yellow? Surely you're going to put it as a one-back pioneer? Well, he's going for that 0.5%. I mean, that seems a bit bizarre. That, that's, no, that is not where red goes. That's where it goes on a three-ball break. He should be rushing yellow back to the end of A-bolt, loading two back and rushing black to red and red should be in front of one back well this is why I'm down at 95% there's little things like this and he's going to ignore black he's putting yellow the wrong side of the hoop he's playing a three ball break now and oh I don't like this you're just asking for errors aren't you it's just so much more difficult He's looking at black now, is he? He was. Oh, he's gone on a hard swing, so he is. 
So he's put yellow the wrong side of the hoop. Yellow should have been east of the hoop to rush back south. Now he's rushed yellow into a position where you can't roll it to two back going to black unless you've got a two to one pass roll. So he's put yellow in a bad spot. He's not guaranteed to get a rush on black to red. And it's all just got ugly. It's just gone. Because even if he plays the best takeoff ever, he's only going to rush black to the same position he's just moved yellow from to do exactly the same shot. Yeah. I think he's right to play a role here. Get that ball in, in the lawn somewhere. And he's done pretty well. It's not dreadful, the blue. You can at least rush it a little bit closer. But now you've got your 20 yard takeoff. To a bad pan Yeah. Handy cut, moving it a few yards closer. Yeah. Certainly helps. But ideally, red should have been at one back and not two and a half yards south. And he should have approached shoot six to the to the east. And you know, all all what should have been easy now has this tiny doubt attached to it. Yeah. So even if he makes one back, he still hasn't always got two balls near two back. He hasn't got a nice pioneer. Yeah. Now he's short on this. It's just all got messy. Good, he's hit that in the middle again. Yeah. But the approach is still two yards northwest of the hoop. Yeah. And here you've got this question about have they slowed down? If so, how much? Yeah. Blue is. It's in front. Straightish, yeah. But you don't want to be taking these yard hoops in this kind of weather. No. With the crosswinds. No just not nice especially when you've got the game in the bag yeah lovely it's tempo good. again yeah. I hope if Tom goes back to this and watches it and compares it to some of the footage from November he'll yeah. notice what a lovely tempo he's yeah. managed to maintain just needs to hit this and then reset get a good pioneer at three back in the middle again. So would you send this out as a pivot? No, I'm going to send this to three back, getting a rush on black west, and, and then send that. black out as a second pioneer if yeah. I need it. So I want two goes. Yeah. And the first one, if this finishes five yards short, it's much better than five yards long. Yeah. I'm not, even with the rain, I'm not messing with this brown patch. Yeah. That's good. It's a good shot. Preferably, blue would have gone another two yards. But Red's actually quite a good pioneer there from that distance. And he rushed Red uh, Black yeah. on top of Yellow. I think that's right. Yeah. Just make sure you have your dolly rush. So Rob's always got a little bit of a chance sitting at the side of the lawn because of lines of play like he's just seen the last five minutes. Yep. It's always, you know, possibility of breaking down. Although saying that, <laughs> Rob's just walking into the air uh, towards the clubhouse. Maybe playing a stopping bisque. So sends that fairly deep <coughs> so he can run the hoop firmly. Again I would have sent yellow on the western side of the hoop so you had a straighter croquet stroke to yep, fall back definitely going behind black from a better angle yeah you still want a good rush on black ideally um here i think he has to swap the pivots over um and I, again i would have liked to have sent a pioneer out having had a second chance to send a better one out if it was wrong yeah so he's rushed that into a position where it's not a good pivot. No, it's kind of out of play, isn't it, almost? Yeah, it's on the wrong part of the lawn and needs to take off and get a rush south on black. Just all a bit untidy. And the sorts of play that, had we maintained the high lawn speed, might have caused a problem. Yeah, definitely. So even here, it's not an ideal rush, is it? 
I'm reasonably happy with that one. You see a good one. So I think I think they'll break for lunch after this. Oh, definitely. I think Rob will want to break. Yeah. I mean, um, Essex loving this. He's in there having lunch, got the afternoon off. These two are playing in the rain. One all could yep. go on for six hours yet. Yeah. Yep. I would say that Essex is the heavy favourite tomorrow. Whoever goes through. I I agree. I think he's favourite. Um, Rob has experience. He is shooting well. Yeah. Um, but he's got to come through this match first, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, and beating Matthew is going to be tough. If Essex plays to the stand he's played this tournament, his opponent needs to play at the top of their ability to compete. Yeah. Which Tom's not far off. It's, you know, it's a couple of, couple of errors, but Rob needs to step his game up to even get through this match. Probably going to be one all. Could have been yeah. two nil down. Yeah, yeah. I mean that the forward pan here again is not good. Everything that yeah. maybe was being sent long is yeah. now being sent short. Yeah. Again, a, a big croco straight. You're, you're moving the, the blue ball a long way to get to yellow here. Yeah. And you, you want a rush on yellow, you don't do, you? Do need a rush, east definitely. This looks pretty good to me. It's got a yeah. lovely rush on yellow. That's the best bike I shot for a few hoops. Red's not perfect, but blue was more important. Yeah. You can put yellow to Penalt as a second ball if he wants to. Um, having rushed it over to the eastern side of the lawn. Nicely on the rush line on black. That's all good. Just want to avoid making Rover off your partner ball. So we'll probably send Red as his Rover pan here. Yeah, the pace has gone out of the lawns totally, isn't it? Yep. Now, so one of the questions is, does this bring big appealing turns into play? Which, Either for today or for tomorrow. I mean, we're struggling with appealing turns from these two players at the moment today. Does it? I think it might control the balls easier. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Does Essek... Sextuple at all? Yeah, he tries to. He's not as high a percentage finisher as sort of the top three players in the world. But he had a go early on in the tournament, um, I think in the knockout, and got to four back and penalt. Right. Um, I don't think it's going to be part of his core strategy for tomorrow. No. I think that's going to be about hitting in third turn and finishing fifth turn. Yeah. And just allow his rocaying ability and basic break play just to see him home. Yeah. So we know Tom doesn't, because we've seen his percentages. Rob obviously does. I mean, interestingly, he's, he's, he's sent black down there. I don't think he's got room to send yellow there. It's not good. And, and he's choosing red, which was the furthest away from the hoop as his pilot. Yeah, yeah. you want to be making Rover off an opponent ball. And it's all since the peeled attempt after five. Well, I don't, under, I don't want to blow your own trumpet there, Chris. Under but set of shot choices after yeah. that, like not approaching six, sending the other ball east, and rushing yellow to the wrong spot, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But he's coped. Yeah. As long as he can rush yellow down there and send it a reception ball, all will be good.
we'll probably have a break after this game. And I know Gavin has a appointment for later on today. Well, I've got a plane appointment that I'm not going to miss, but I'm going to grab some lunch after this game. Yeah, so I think we'll probably take a break. The two this players will stop for lunch, won't they? Rob will go and have lunch, I'm pretty sure. Um, and hopefully be able to come back for the start of the third. But, um, yeah, Tom's just putting yellow behind Rover, so it's a reception ball. He wants to hit yellow first, and then he'll get a rush on black back to the peg. Like you. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. That's only... I mean, he was trying to hit that in the middle, wasn't he? So a little bit longer an approach than you want, and I hate approaching hoops with takeoffs. No, it's a, it's a no-no. And there's, there isn't really a need for it here, is there? Because you've got yellow as your reception ball. Uh, you could play a normal croquet stroke to approach if you want here. Don't like these little takeoffs. He's played it well, so it should be fine. Through easily. That hoop stroke standing up very well. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. I mean, like you, I think he's 2 nil up. But... He is still one all, and the game is still very much open. I mean, that error now is looking so costly. 2 0 going into lunch. Yeah. He'll be confident. Yeah. But he's played the best croquet, I think, and uh, he should be take confidence from that. Yeah, he certainly deserves to be one all, and yeah. probably more than that. Yeah. Um, And it's been fun commentating on this game rather than the Essex game that's just uh, boring old triples. Well, certainly been a lot of interaction here. And join us after lunch for game three. Thanks very much, Gavin. No, thank you. We enjoyed it immensely.
Good afternoon, everybody. Just to confirm, we'll, we'll close this stream, let the players have their lunch, and we'll be right back with you for the third game in this match.